Hello and welcome to the course Marketing Agency Website with React and Tailwind CSS. So, in this course, we are going to build a complete marketing agency website using two technologies. The first one will be the world's most popular and powerful front end library, React.js, and the second one will be the world's first utility CSS framework, Tailwind CSS. And we will build this complete application from the scratch. We are not going to use any CSS libraries like Bootstrap, Material UI, and Design, etc. We will be using only Tailwind CSS for our styling. And my name is Satya. I will be the instructor of this course. So without any movement, let's get started. This is the landing page of our application, or we can also call it as the home page. So in the home page, we are going to display the complete information about the marketing and marketing strategies. We are not going to provide any our company information in the home page because if a customer or a client visits our home page, first they must understand what is marketing, how marketing works, how marketing boosts their business, etc. So at the top, we are going to have a quotation about the marketing. The best marketing doesn't feel like marketing. And at the right side, we will be having a Lottie animation. So coming to the next section, we'll be having what are the different types of marketing strategies that we will implement. So we are going to work on content marketing, inbound marketing, social media, search engine optimization. So these are the four different marketing strategies. Then after we'll be having a separate section, why marketing, why a company requires marketing. So this is all about the home page. Now I will navigate to the about page. Here you can see this is the about page. So at the top, we are having the information about our company, our company quotation and our company logo. So she agency, older, stronger, wiser. So if you scroll down, we'll be having what we do. That means what kind of services we will provide in our marketing agency. So I have written web development, mobile development, digital marketing and graphic design. Then after we'll be having a separate section why choose us because there will be a lot of marketing companies available so why a customer should trust us why a client should trust us so we have to provide some options for them so i have given innovative and passionate good return on investment and seamless customer support so this is all about the about page now i will navigate to the clients page so here you can see this is the client's page as like the home and about we will be having the intro section first. So at the left side we will be having the animation and at the right side we will be having some quotation about the clients. We work together with our clients. If you scroll down you will be having the list of clients which are using our marketing services. So here you can navigate to the clients using two different things that is uh, arrow icon as well as these circles. So if you click on this arrow icon, you can able to see the next clients. And even if you click on these circles also, you can able to see the next clients. So this is about the clients list. And at the bottom, you will be having the numbers section. So here we'll be having the number of clients we have served, number of projects we have completed, and number of locations where our company is there. Now let's navigate to the last page, that is contact page. So it is very simple. So first we will have our information, get in touch. So here we are having a text like Sage agency is digital marketing agency. We provide marketing and development services. So then after I'm having the location, mail and uh, phone number. So at the right side, if they want to contact us by providing their information, we are having a form with the first name, last name, email, phone number and message. So if they click on the send message, we will receive an email with the details of this to this email. So this is about the contact us page. And at the last, we will be having our favorite thing designed and developed by the developer name. And coming to the best things in this application, we are maintaining only two colors in this application. So this is the primary color and this is the secondary color. So in the entire application, we will be using only two colors and we are going to build all the components by using these two colors itself. And then we'll be having the footer navigation. So you might have seen navbar in different positions for some websites like top, left, right like that. But for the first time we are implementing the navbar at the footer. So here you can see this is the footer navbar where we will have different page routes home, about, clients and contact and the active route will be highlighted with the crown shape. Suppose I am in the home page. So the home got highlighted with the icon as well as the crown shape. If I go to the about, about will be highlighted with the crown shape. 
with the icon so like this way we are going to highlight our nav bar so this is one of the unique thing in the application the third one is responsiveness the application is completely responsive in the mobile so let me open in one of the iphone device i'll open in iphone sc or iphone 6 here you can see so we don't have any glitches or bugs in the mobile view so everything will be fine even in the mobile view also so this is the home page this is the about page so we are adjusting based on the media queries using the tailwind css and this is the clients page so we are not even missing any margin or padding in the mobile view so even if you open this in any device it will work without any issues so this is the third best thing in the application so coming to the prerequisites you must have some basic knowledge in the react and uh, pure css you need not to have a specific knowledge in tailwind css because we are going to learn all the tailwind css classes from scratch so thank you i'll see you in the course welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to create our react application for the marketing website with react and tailwind css so first i am going to open my projects folder file manager projects so this is my projects folder here i am going to open the command terminal cmd or you can open using the visual studio code also so first i am going to create the react application using the normal terminal then after i will open the vs code so to create a new react application you have to type npx create hyphen react hyphen app followed by the application name so we are going to name the application as shea market or shea agency so it is a marketing agency application so i am going to uh, write the name as shea agency so you can change the name accordingly so shea agency is my react application name i am going to click enter so it is going to create a new react application with the name shea agency so it might take a while depending upon our system as well as the internet performance until then please wait here we go guys so react application has created successfully now i'm going to close this terminal so this is the new folder that we got in the projects so i'm going to open this folder in the visual studio code let me open vs code so i'll close all the pending projects in the vs code let me save this yeah so i'm going to click on the file open folder local disk f i think so yeah projects local disk f and select our newly created application so the application name is she agency here you can see we got the react folder structure here click on the select folder now we are in our actual project folder shea agency so if you observe this is the react default structure that means default folder structure so if you expand src there will be app.js this is the entry point of our application so first i am going to run this application using the command npm start new terminal so npm start So this will also take some time depending upon our internet performance. You can see here our application executed successfully. Now I'm going to run this application in the localhost 3000. So open your favorite browser. I'm going to open it in the Google Chrome. So localhost 3000. So this is the default output for every new react application. So if you want to change anything in the default output. So first of all, you have to open the app.js file. SRC app.js remove all the default stuff. And I'm going to write only one H1 text with our project title H1. Not HTTPS. It is H1. I just write Shea Agency. Here you can see all the default stuff has gone. Now we have only one H1 text in the app.js. That is our project title Shea Agency. So by this we have completed how to create a new react application, how to execute the application and how to change the default stuff in the app.js. 
so in the next lecture we are going to see how to install all the npm modules that we are going to use in this application so mainly we will be using two modules that is react router dom as well as the tailwind css so in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the folder structure as well as the npm modules thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to see how to set up tailwind css in our application so first of all we are going to install all the npm modules then we are going to see the tailwind css so as i said mostly we will be using only two npm modules they are react router dom as well as the tailwind css so react router dom we can install in one step but to uh, install tailwind css we have to follow some steps so let me open the tailwind css tailwind css so here uh, click on the docs so my internet connection is slow it's taking long time to load yeah here you can see get started with tailwind css so in the installation we are having four different tabs we have to select the third tab framework guides because we are going to install tailwind css in our react application so click on this framework guides so here you will be having a create react tab option so click on this and here you can see you have to follow all these steps to get the tailwind css into our application so first of all we have to create a new react application and we have to navigate into that react application so this step is done now the second step is we have to install two things the first one will be tailwind css post css and auto prefixer so just copy this statement and terminate our job or delete the job and click on new terminal press enter so this is the second step in installing tailwind css here you can see the packages got installed successfully now we are having the one more statement that is npx tailwind css init hyphen p so just copy this statement so after uh, writing this statement in the terminal you will get two files tailwind.config.js and postcss.config.js so after writing this command you have to test this that means whether you get these files or not press enter so here you can see we got two different files post css dot config dot js tailwind dot config dot js so our statement is successful now let's go to the fourth step the fourth step is we have to copy this code snippet and paste it in the tailwind dot config dot js just copy this and go to the tailwind dot config dot js remove all the existing code and override this and the fifth step is in the index.css you have to paste these three lines copy and the index.css will be present in the src folder just click on this remove everything and paste the three lines that we have copied i think we are done with the steps so the last step is npm run start that means we have to start our react application so now we are going to install the react router dom also i am going to type npm install react hyphen router hyphen dom press enter here you can see react router dom has been installed successfully now i am going to restart the server npm start so close everything so before making the folder structure i want to test whether our tailwind installation process is successful or not so to test that we just have to apply any one of the class from the tailwind css so if we get the expected output our tailwind installation is successful so our application is loading please let it load then after we are going to test the tailwind css classes the application restarted successfully now i am going to restart the server here you can see the text got changed automatically based on the tailwind css so now i am going to add some of the styles in the app.js so this is the h1 text right so for this h1 text i am going to write the class name text 
for Excel. So if I hover on this, I will get the respective properties from the Tailwind CSS. So text to for Excel class indicates font size 2.5, 2.25rem or 36 pixels and line height is 2.5rem or 40 pixels. So to get these hover properties, you just need to install the Tailwind CSS ESLint. So that means Tailwind CSS lint properties. So you will get all the properties when we hover on the Tailwind classes. So let me show you the extension clearly. So you won't get confused. Tailwind. Yeah, here you can see Tailwind CSS Intel Sense. So if you install this extension in the VS code, so you will get all the CSS properties when you hover like this. So now let's see the output. So if you get any change in the text, our Tailwind installation is successful. Here you can see the text font size got changed successfully. Now let me apply some of the other Tailwind classes. So to apply the background for any HTML element using the Tailwind classes, you just need to apply the property BG hyphen color name hyphen color weight. So weight will vary from 500 to not 500, 50 to 900. So I am going to apply the average weight uh, that is 500. Here you can see we got the background color. So you need not to worry about the Tailwind classes. I am going to explain each and every class that I am going to write. So you just need to follow the documentation parallelly while watching the lectures. So we'll understand better. So we are done with the Tailwind CSS. Now we are going to make the folder structure. So let's create the folder structure. First, I am going to create pages folder because we'll be having four different pages, home, about, clients, contact us. So we are going to have four different pages. Then we'll be having the components. That means if you want to use any code snippet in all the pages that you can write in the components folder, all the reusable things we can write in the components and pages are constant things. Components are reusable things. Now in pages, I am going to create a separate folder for every page. So let me close this app.js. So first we'll be having the home page. So I'm going to create the home folder. So in this home folder, the main one will be index.js and remaining all will be components like intro section, services section like that. So we are going to split the code. So we are not going to dump everything in the single page. So we are going to make the component level structure. So the second page will be about about page. So here also same index.js and remaining will be components. Then we'll be having the clients here also index.js and remaining will be components. And the last page will be contact. contact and here also I'll create one for file that is index.js that's all so now in all the pages I am going to create one simple functional component to make the routing RFCE so this is about here also about and here also I'll just write about so let's copy this snippet and paste it in the remaining files so this is clients clients let's go to the contact contact here also contact contact now the last one will be home 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 here also home so that's all guys so we have created the proper folder structure for our application so in the next lecture we are going to set up the routing for all these pages thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have installed the tailwind css and react outer dom and also we have set up all the folder structure for our application so let me close all the folders and just open app.js.
so remove these two files not true files to import statements because we don't require that for my document so if you want to delete the app.css also you can do it because everything will be depending on the tailwind css itself so first of all uh, we have to import the browser router from the react router dom import browser router as well as the routes and uh, route from react router dom react router dom let's remove this h1 text and here i am going to create the browser router as our wrapper and then we'll be having the routes as our parent element sorry now we have to create four different routes the first one will be home page route so path is equal to empty slash indicates the home and we have the element prop there we have to pass the component or page it is home oh sorry home similarly just copy the statement and repeat it for the remaining four different routes the next one will be about the next one will be clients and the last one will be contact here also we have to change the respective pages about clients and the last one is contact that's all so now we have to import all these things import first i'll start with the home home from dot dot slash thing dot slash pages slash home similarly just copy this and repeat it for the remaining four about here also about oh sorry this is home actually yeah this is clients and this is also clients here contact this is also contact let's format this now test each and every route so here you can see this is the home page we are going to get the home text now i am going to contact so the text got changed to contact so i am going to zoom it now let me open about about and the last one is clients we got the clients so now if you see the deployed version which will be considering as our prototype let me open the deployed version share market dot netlify dot app something went wrong here it's not share market it is agency share agency yeah so here you can see this is the deployed version so in the deployed version that means as i said we'll be considering just as the prototype so we are going to make some more pages which we are not there in the uh, deployed version so in the deployed version we have only home about clients so we are going to build the contact as page also in our current application so we will be considering just as the prototype so here you can see so if you go to the home page or about page or clients page the footer will be same actually this is the nav bar so just for the uniqueness purpose i have placed it in the bottom so it will be uh, good in the both mobile view as well as the desktop view 
so this is the home this is about and this is clients here you can see in every page the layout will be same that means our footer will be in the same position because we are using the layout here so we are going to wrap all the pages content in that layout so in that layout we will be having the footer as the constant that means component so that we are going to have in our layout component so let me create the layout component so go to the components create a file or component that is layout.js so here just keep the functional component so to this layout we are going to pass all our pages so in this layout we are going to keep the footer as the fixed component so it will be constant in all the pages so let me create the footer first so just for your understanding i am going to write one class name as footer because we won't be having anything for the class name with the footer in tailwind css so this is the footer and i am going to write h1 footer now if you go to the pages this is the about page right so wrap everything in the layout so layout should be your parent component in all the pages so you will get the footer automatically in all the pages go to the index copy and wrap this in the layout you have to repeat the same for all the pages contact now the last one will be home so we are passing all our pages content to the layout now just open the layout so in the layout first we have to show the content then we have to show the footer anyhow the footer will be constant with the absolute position or fixed position so now i am going to write so first we have to receive the children from the props so i am going to destructure children from the props children and here i am going to write dot content i am going to wrap the children that's it so now in every page you will get the footer here you can see clients footer if i go to the home i you, you will get home and footer home and footer footer will be constant because we are using the layout mechanism let me go to the uh, what it is contact contact footer so we will style this footer which we will get in the bottom and we are going to get lot of styling so leave about that so we are going to focus in the next section so let's test in the remaining pages clients it is also working fine the last one will be about this is also fucking working fine so this is about the layout mechanism so in every page you will get one constant thing that is footer that means our nav bar and the remaining the pages content will be same so from the next section we will be working on the actual nav bar of our application thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the footer nav bar of our shay agency application that means our marketing agency application with react and tailwind css so first of all let me close this tailwind documentation because i am going to explain everything from scratch so let me bring this here this is the prototype and this is the actual application so in the entire application this is somewhat uh, somewhat the difficult thing so remaining we will do with normal flex and uh, uh, position classes all those things so this is somewhat difficult so listen very carefully so let's get started first of all uh, i am going to open the public folder index.html remove all the commented code and replace our application with the shay agency dev because at the left side we'll be having the actual deployed version and at the right side we'll be having the current version so that's the reason i'm going to write the application name as shay agency hyphen dev that means the production it's not a production it is a development version shay agency dev yeah here you can see the application name got changed successfully 
so now the first and foremost thing we have to do is we have to bring this footer at the bottom so we can do it in two ways with the help of position absolute as well as the fixed so i am going to choose the second one fixed position so close everything except the layout.js so this is the footer right uh, remove the class footer and remove the class content because we wouldn't be having any effect from the classes with the tailwind css so i'm going to write the comments content put it in the comments and this is footer we can also consider this uh, content as the body section so this is the footer so first i am going to write make it fixed so if i hover on this i am going to get the class name position fixed so it should be bottom i'll just write uh, 10 bottom 10 that means bottom 40 pixels left 0 right 0 here you can see left 0 pixels right 0 pixels now let's see mm, i could not see the footer i don't know what happened oh sorry actually we have removed the text h1 footer let's see the output now here you can see we got the footer so let me make it 100 percent so here i got the footer so leave it about the content placement so we can place it center later so first of all we should have the menus here you can see we have the home about clients so now what i will do i am going to create an array const menu oh sorry menu items is equal to it should be an array so the first one will be title home and uh, path should be empty slash so we will be having the icon property that we are going to discuss in the next lecture so leave about it so just make it empty string then we will be having the about just copy these properties and replicate this here about about then it should be clients here also clients and the last one will be contact contact here also i'll just write contact now what i will do remove this footer create one more div in this footer div and write the class name as flex class name will be flex and here i am going to write menu items dot map so for every iteration we are going to get the item and for every item we are going to render one div in the div for the time being i am going to have one link tag later we are going to style this link tag so the tag name will be item dot title and the link must have the two prop so after clicking on this where it should navigate so it should navigate to the item dot path so i'll just use item dot path that's it now let's see the output yeah so here you can see we got home about clients contact now we have to bring this center just write text center and make it w 
full still it is not working so what i will do for this flex also i am going to make it w full remove the text center and w full for the parent because anyhow we will be having the child class name as flex only so w full so here what i will do mm, justify center now it must be in the center here you can see we got home clients contact at the center now for this div i am going to apply the classes class name is equal to first uh, let me apply mx10 mx10 so we got the gap then we should have the background color here you can see we have the background color so we are going to use only two colors in this application one is primary color as well as the secondary color i am not going to dump all the available colors in the application so it will look very odd so we are going to make it as simple as possible with the rich component and rich looks so the first primary color will be this and the second color will be similar to orange so first i am going to copy this color so you can choose your own colors but uh, maximum you have to choose only two or three then only it will look like a professional marketing website so let's go to the tailwind.config.js so here you can see in this we can write the configuration so by default we will get only a few colors so if you want any outside of the out of the box colors that means which are not available in the tailwind css you can write them in the extend so we are going to extend colors so i am going to create the primary color the color name is primary and the value will be this and the second one is secondary and i am going to copy the secondary color it looks similar to orange this is my secondary color copy and this is my secondary color that's all refresh now for all the menus i am going to apply color primary so this is the link tag right or we can apply for this uh, div also so let me apply for the div bg primary that's it here you can see we got the link so now uh, let me change the link color to white not white i think it is uh, secondary color so here you can see this is orange that means our secondary color so i'll just write text hyphen secondary so text followed by the color name text secondary here you can see we got the color now here uh, for this div instead of pmx10 i am going to make it px10 so there won't be white space uh, right side or left side to the main items yeah like this it will look now let me apply some padding py5 mm, almost looking good yeah so let me increase the margin or not margin padding px yeah this looks clean so here you can see we should have the rounded corners so for that you just have to use the class name rounded here also we have a condition so if you use rounded directly here let's see what will happen here you can see you will get like this so we don't want rounded for all the menu items we want rounded only for the uh, first one last one the two for the first one it should be left side and for the last one it should be right side now i will write using the conditional properties so just write curly braces here and put the back ticks to check the conditions yeah so now what i will do if here i am going to write the property index and i am going to check the index if index equal to equal to 0 
if index equal to equal to 0 then I am going to write rounded L that means left side then I am going to write one more thing if index equal to equal to menu items dot length minus 1 I am going to write rounded R that's it so let me explain this statement clearly so if index equal to equal to 0 that means if it is the first item we are going to apply the corner radius for the first item left side that means this side if it is the last element we are going to apply the condition uh, index is equal to equal to menu items dot length minus 1 so menu items dot length is equal to 4 4 minus 1 3 if index equal to 3 means that is the last item so for the last item we are applying rounded R that means right side now let's see the output here you can see we got the rounded radius like this now I am going to increase the font size of these menu items so to increase the font size you just need to apply font uh, Excel or oh, not font Excel it is text Excel so font sizes vary from XS to 8 Excel or 9 Excel here you can see text Excel is nothing but font size 20 px let's see how it is looking yeah it's almost looking good now the last one we are going to do in this lecture is we are going to change the font so I am going to use my favorite font that is Montserrat from the Google fonts so I am going to get it uh, Google fonts so I'll just type Montserrat so this is my favorite font so I'll use all in my projects copy the statement and go to the index.css and paste it here and we'll be having one more statement font family copy and at the bottom I'm going to write star for all the elements I want this font family and I also going to make the important that's all here you can see the font got changed successfully so leave about the responsiveness so we are going to focus about the responsiveness later so first we have to design the application for the desktop view perfectly then we can focus on the uh, responsiveness anyhow by the end of this course you will get the application responsive so don't bother about the responsiveness from the first lecture itself so in the next lecture we are going to focus on the active element styling that means whenever the home page is active we are going to get this uh, temple look here so temple or whatever it may be crone or anything so i'm going to design this uh, in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the active route part as well as the icons in the navbar so first we are going to get the icons from the remix icons library and then we'll be working on the highlighting the active route part that means we are going to get a crown shape if the route is active so here you can see this is the home page that's the reason home got highlighted if i go to about the about will be highlighted so like this way we are going to highlight the active route by using this crown design so first we have to get the icons so actually in the deployed version i have used the font awesome icons but uh, for, the for some reason i don't know why the font awesome icons are not working properly so I have chosen one more library that is called as the remix icons. So this is also similar to font awesome we can use using the CDN link. So here we can find lot of icons. So first we need to click on this get started. If you scroll down you will be having the CDN link. This is the CDN link. Copy and paste the link in the index.html. Here you can see this is the index.html paste it here now let's go to the icons so first we are going to get the home icon so I'll copy first I will search the home so here we have lot of icons which is related to the home you can copy any one of it so I'm going to copy this icon if I click on this I'm going to get the I element that means uh, 
so the complete html element but we are not going to copy the complete element we are going to copy just the class name copy the class name and put it for the icon then the next one will be about so about will be uh, similar to information just type info so if you scroll down here you can see we are having the information icon just copy this and copy the class name paste it here now next we will be having the clients so clients we can search using the people people or you can also search uh, users yeah so user and faces mm. i'll copy this one clients copy and paste it here now the last one will be contact just search contact so i'll copy this and this is the last one so we got four different icon classes now here uh left side of the anchor tag that means link i am going to write i class name will be item dot icon item dot icon and i am going to write uh, some more classes they are text to white as well as the text excel now let's see the output i hope we should get the icons yeah here you can see we got the icons so right now i have given the text to white we are going to change it so we have to give the icon color as text secondary text secondary yeah so now we got icons like this so we'll be working on the styling first so this is the div right uh, for this div i am going to apply the class name flex here so here i will write flex item center oh before the back tick only we have to write the classes yeah flex items center and justify center yeah now this is looking clean and i will write space x5 mm, space x5 is too high let me write space x2 yeah now this is looking much better now we have to highlight the active route so this is the home page the home should be highlighted if i go to the about about should be highlighted if i go to the clients client should be highlighted so we are going to uh, highlight using the crown shape so at the top of home i am going to get the crown shape how to get that so first what i will do is so this is somewhat difficult part so we are going to change the styles what we have written up to now also so listen very carefully so first i am going to wrap everything in a fragment so i have placed a fragment so i can have few more elements here so first we have to check whether the uh, route is active or not how can we check so we are going to check using the location const location is equal to use location from the react router dom use location from the react router dom so we will get the active route by using the location dot path name so now what i will do i'll just type if location dot path name equal to equal to item dot path then i am going to render one div or else the fragment i will render div only
div so for the time being i am going to render one h1 text i'll just write active now let's see the output so here you can see this is present at the right side of the home if i go to about this is present at the right side of the about if i go to the client this is present at the right side yeah so the design is not looking good but we got the logic now we have to get this active element on top of the active element that means active keyword on top of the active element how to do that so it is very simple so first you have to convert this fragment into flex div make it div here also make it div and make this class name flex and flex call now let's see here you can see now we got at the uh, top yeah so we are going to change few more stylings so first uh, for this flex class i am going to apply justify end here you can see now only the active element is at top of the home now i am going to bring this active at the center so before bring it to the center i am going to remove this h1 text and i am going to create one more div so this div will be having class name is equal to Mm, h phi w 10 bg primary now let's see what will be the output so we got an element like this now bottom of this i am going to create one more div class name h phi w 20 bg primary nice we got like this now what i will do for this i am going to write items center now we got everything at the center now i want to bring these at these also at the center how to bring it first let's try to inspect this So this is the h5 w20 this is h5 w10 so for this div we are going to have uh, let me write uh, text align center no this is not working so i'll just write display flex flex call flex direction column and uh, align items center yeah so here you can see for this parent element we are going to have the class flex and we are going to make it flex direction column and we are going to align the items center so now let's see so i think already we have this but why it is not uh why it is not working items center perfect Mm, let me write a uh, w full no it's not at all working okay let me wrap these two things in a separate div i think that should be also flex call only okay 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 sorry so here here you can see we are missing a div so here we have to add that class name is equal to flex flex call and uh, items center that's it here you can see we got somewhat design similar to crone now we are going to have the border radius so for this div i am going to have uh, rounded t full and for this div also i am going to have rounded T, rounded T means top corners rounded T full that's it here you can see we got a design like 
chrome not chrome chrome now we are going to send this icon to the top how to send it it is very simple so we need not to send that so in the second div that means in this div we are going to have the icon just write i class name is equal to uh, item dot icon item dot icon so we are going to write the same classes what we have written at the bottom for the remaining attributes not attributes elements uh, okay already we have the class name it should be back ticks yeah so now i'm going to write text excel now let's see for the home we should get two icons now we got one more icon now i'm going to change the color where it is text white text white text white we got the color now i'm going to make it text align center oh not here here we have to write text center that's all we got the icon at the center now we have to hide this icon whenever the route is active so it is very simple this is the i write so we are going to write it in the condition where location dot path name is not equal to equal to item dot path item dot path then only we have to render this icon that's it so we are done with the nav bar i think so so here it is looking somewhat difficult guys you know, so you have to write some conditional rendering all those things but we are getting a unique and rich look for our nav bar here you can see how cool it is clear so this is the deployed and this is the current almost similar but in the deployed version we have used some different icons and uh, we have only three now we are having four with some different icons so icons is depends upon you you are going to change it based on your requirement so in the next lecture we are going to make this navbar responsive that is also one of the complex part so in the next lecture we will see thank you welcome back guys in the last section we have completed the navbar in our shagency application so in this lecture we are going to work on the home screen so in the last lecture i have said we will be working on the responsiveness but i am not going to work on the responsiveness from now itself so first we will complete all the screens in the desktop view and at the end of the course we will be having a separate section where we can learn everything about the responsiveness so i am not going to mess up everything right now so first we will be focusing only on the desktop view so this is our home screen layout first we will be having the intro section in the intro section at the left side we will be having one text and at the right side we will be having the animation so we are going to get this animation from the lotty <coughs> if you scroll down here you will be having some text about the marketing strategies all those things so how the marketing is helpful to the businesses all those things and why marketing all those things so in the home section will be not home section in the home page we will be covering about the marketing uh, intro so now let's start designing the home page of our application so here you can see this is the nav bar where i can switch between the screens now we are going to work on the home screens so before starting the home screen first we have to get this animation so as i said we are going to get this animation from the lotty so lotty animations is one of the famous site where we will get the powerful uh, gif animations we can use that in the normal html files as well as in the react so just type lotty lotty animation so you must have an account in this to use their uh, animations so i already logged in with my account here you can see now i am going to type uh, marketing or i will write uh, social so you can type your own words so you will get a, you will get the list of animations there you will click on that mm, social so this is our animation where we uh, which we have used in the deployed version i'm not finding it uh, let me go to the second page
still not showing let me write marketing here also we got different animations but we didn't got the version actually what we have used in the deployed i think while developing this uh, i have searched like social or social media let me search social media so not only this you can use any one of these also that's up to you based on your requirement but select the free one yeah so this is the one which we have used in the deployed version so just click on the animation so it will take us to the uh, animation model so here you have to select the html use animation in html click on this now if you scroll down you will be having the generated code so first you have to select the script copy this script and paste it in the index.html this is the index.html paste it in the head now we have to copy the actual html element of the lottie player so this is the lottie player these we have to keep in the uh, home page intro section now i am going to create a intro component in the home page so this is the home folder right i am going to create a component intro intro.js oh sorry this is not a folder it is a component let me delete it home page intro component intro dot js so i'll just write rfce functional component now here i am going to divide this intro section into two parts the first part will be related to the text and the second part will be related to the animation so you can divide the div into two parts by using a uh, flex or the grid so you can choose any one of that so i am going to choose the flex because it is having two only so first uh or else we can choose grid only so if you choose grid it is easy to write the responsiveness so let me write class name is equal to grid and grid calls two that means i am dividing these grid into two parts the first part will be related to the text i am going to keep it empty for the time being and the second part is related to the animation so i have pasted this animation format the document now i am going to remove this style prop and also you need to remove the loop uh, controls prop format the document and for this parent div just apply the class h screen h screen sorry that means it should uh, take the full height of the screen h screen that's it now let's see the output ones refresh the page okay we have to add this intro component in the home page let's go to the index remove this home text and add the intro component yeah so here you can see we got the animation and the second part is empty because we are having the empty content so now i am going to uh, write the content in the second part before that uh, what i will do let me close everything except the intro.js yeah so i have pasted the second part directly now for the second part i am going to write class name is equal to uh, p10 padding 40 pixels from all the sides yeah now it is looking good now in the first part we are going to have a text like this so we already know what is the primary color and what is the secondary color so we are going to use only two colors for the text as well as the background colors so first we'll be having a h1 text with the text the best marketing then we'll be decreasing the size of the text doesn't feel like marketing then we'll be having the get started button so we are going to make a flex call or we can directly write the margin top for the elements so that's up to you so first i'm going to write one h1 text the best and for marketing text we are having some different color so now i am going to make it in the bold tag marketing the best marketing then we'll be having doesn't feel like marketing i'm going to write one more h1 text doesn't feel like marketing 
marketing yeah first we will this uh, style these two uh, h1 text then we will go to the button area so let's see how the output is looking here you can see we are getting output like this so first we have to get this at the center of the page for that you just need to write only one thing that is item center item center yeah so we got the item center now what i will do uh, so this is the h1 text right uh, for these also i am going to write class name is equal to text left i think text this is not text left yeah text left it should work mm, let me write w full this is not working so again i have to use the flex itself flex uh okay flex call it should be flex call and uh, items end items end yeah so now we get like this now we are going to style this text so what i will do now uh, for the normal h1 text i am going to write class name is equal to text 7 xl text 7 xl is nothing but font size is equal to 7 to 2 pixels and i will write font semi bold now let's see yeah so we are getting like this now we are going to write uh, what this is uh, doesn't feel like marketing so before that we have to change the colors so for the entire h1 i am going to write text primary and for the marketing i am going to write text secondary text secondary yeah like this now i am going to write this text so here we can decrease the font size like uh, text 4xl or 3xl again i am saying we are going to decrease all the sizes in the mobile view at the end of the course yeah doesn't feel like marketing i am going to write uh, same font semi bold that's it so here it is looking like this and here it is looking like this no issues i am going to make it as it is anyhow so for this flex i am going to write space y space y uh, you can write first let me try with 5 yeah so we got a margin let me write 10 yeah 10 is good now i am going to bring this marketing at the bottom so it's very simple uh, just write a br tag here break tag it will come down yeah so it's looking like this somewhat odd what i will do i will remove these items end we'll remove these items end looking like this right now what i will do this is the h1 text uh, parent right so for this parent i am going to write px20 so that means from padding left side and right side will be having 80 pixels padding now it should be almost at the center yeah like this even if you decrease even if you increase also there won't be any issue let me write 30 first only for the intro section i think px30 is not there let me write 32 yeah this looks cool and i'm going to increase this size in the deployed version we have uh, some more size uh let me write text 5xl yeah this is looking clean and now at the bottom we are going to have a button so the button will be get started so i am going to write button name will be get started now i am going to style this button class name is equal to the first one will be px8 and py2 or 3 and bg uh, secondary and uh, text xl and uh, so what we can write text white text white so px is nothing but the left side and right side padding py is nothing but the top and margin uh, top and bottom padding bg secondary is nothing but we are going to have the orange color for the button and text excel is the font size for the button 
and text white is for the font color let's see how it is looking so it is taking the full width so i'm not going to take the full width so i'm going to take just the uh, maximum width content so you just write max w max max w max so it will take the maximum width itself like this so i think we have to increase some padding and margin not padding and margin only padding px10 px5 yeah these looks clean even for the button it is having more let me write px15 i think ps15 is not there px16 yeah it is there yeah now it is almost similar to the uh, what it is deployed version except some width and all those things so by this we are done with the uh, intro section of the home page so don't open this website until unless we write the responsive code but because it will look very weird in the mobile view so after writing the responsive code only you have to see this screen in the mobile not only this screen even in the this navbar also it looks very odd and weird in the mobile view so until unless we complete the course don't open this in the mobile view just focus on the desktop that's it so in the next lecture we'll be working on the remaining sections in the uh, home page so this section and this uh, marketing strategy section all those things thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the second section in our screen that is marketing strategies so in the home page we have completed the first section that is intro and the second section is marketing strategies what are the different types of marketing strategies and how it will help the business to grow so want to boost your business growth the solution is here these are the four different marketing strategies that every business will do content marketing inbound marketing social media search engine optimization and there uh, then after we'll be having the why marketing text so now let's focus on this area first then we'll be uh, working on these uh, uh, what it is marketing strategies first let me work on the text part so i'm going to create one more component in the home that is marketing strategies dot js rfce so let me keep this component here where is home yeah this is home mm, what i will do mm, marketing strategies yeah we got the text marketing strategies so before this uh, let me do one change so in the intro.js here we have written px32 right instead of this what we can do means we can write directly to the content itself or else uh, in the page itself we can write so i am going to create a div here so for all the components we will be having the class name px32 while writing the mobile responsive code we can change it yeah now it is in the same position so now what i will do first i am going to uh, create one h1 text with the want to boost your business let me copy this text copy and put it in the marketing strategies remove this text h1 and i'll write class name is equal to text uh, 4xl text 4xl font semi bold and text primary yeah we got this text i think text 4xl is not enough let me write text 6xl yeah mm, 6 is also looking too high let's select the midpoint 5 yeah so then after we'll be having the solution is here again the solution is in the orange color that means text secondary so it's simple just write one h1 text solution is here again copy the solution and put it in the bold tag where we will change the color so first for the h1 text you have to write class name is equal to same uh, text 7xl or 8xl let me write 7xl font semi bold font semi bold and uh, uh, text primary 
text primary yeah that's all and uh, for the bold tag i am going to write text secondary text secondary let's see the output yeah we got the text and for uh, this uh, second h1 text i am going to write empty 10 why it is not even applying hmm mt 10 or else let me write mb 10 here okay you have to apply for the h1 not bold here you have to apply mt 10 or and you can use the flex call as well as the spacing that would be better yeah here you can see we got the text the solution is here then we'll be having some paragraph curious about marketing strategies all those things just copy this text and put it in one paragraph tag paragraph copy this now what i will do for this paragraph i am going to write text gray 500 or 600 for paragraph we won't be having the primary colors and secondary colors we will be having only the text gray so it will look some rich uh, kind of in the mobile view as well as in the white screens so text md is enough i think so let me check here also i'm going to write md 10 md 10 md 10 is okay but uh, text md is not okay let me write text excel text excel yeah this looks clean and now uh, i want to do one more change here here you can see the header not header the footer component is overriding the remaining content area so to avoid this what we can do means let's go to the layout and here for the content uh, this is the children right so here you can directly write padding bottom 32 32 is not enough let me write uh, 42 i'm not sure whether we'll be having the 42 44 classes or not yeah 44 is having yeah now we can scroll it up to the uh, above of the footer so now this is looking clean and neat so in the next lecture we'll be working on the list of marketing strategies i'm going to provide all the assets as well as the resources for these marketing strategies and uh, remaining uh, content also like in the about we'll be having the uh, what it is uh, what we do services why chooses all those things i'm going to provide everything in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture i am going to give the access for all our project resources in this application so here you can see if you observe my desktop there is a folder called as she agency resources so here you will be having the images folder so the list of images what we are using in the application so i am not going to use any urls because if you use the urls we may have the chance of losing it so that's the reason i have downloaded all the images and i kept it in a static folder so i am going to provide this folder in the resources in the first lecture itself that means the intro cell intro lecture and this is the clients array services array what we do array why chooses array so we are going to use these arrays whenever we performing or whenever we designing the respective sections so first in this section we will be working on the services itself so if i open this here you can see const services so for every object we will be having the title of the service that means marketing strategies and then we will be having the description then we will be having the image so like this way we will be having the uh, arrays as well as the resources so first just copy these images folder and then let's go to our projects folder actually so let me open my project folder this pc projects she market or she agency where it is yeah she agency public so here you have to paste the images folder yeah so the images folder has been placed successfully now as i said we'll be working on the marketing strategies so marketing strategies are nothing but the services so let me change it to the services itself so you need not to confuse marketing strategies 
marketing strategies and i am going to copy whatever the content present in this copy this and now open marketing strategies here i am going to paste it because we have to loop through that yeah so now let me change this services to the strategies strategies now if you open this is my github so if you open this at the bottom of this uh, solution is here and paragraph we are going to list of the marketing strategies so this is the looking so first we are going to generate a normal grid then we'll be style this after the paragraph what i will do i am going to write strategies oh before that we have to uh, create a grid dot grid and a grid calls two that means per one row we are going to display two strategies grid calls two it calls two now let me write strategies dot map so strategy is the iterating object or you can write the item item so for every iteration we are going to return a div return a div there we are going to display first all the properties so the first one will be i think the title yeah this is the title h1 item dot title then we'll be having the uh, image img src is equal to item dot image okay. item dot image so here if you observe the array we have written the path of the images for every object images slash content marketing so if you go to the images folder we will be having a image called as the content marketing here you can see so like this way i have given you the predefined array so you need not to do anything in the images folder or here yeah so this is the image uh, let me write some height and width for the image class name is equal to empty oh not empty uh, h 10 w also uh, 10 so let me write 40 okay 10 is too small 2020 then we'll be having one paragraph text this should be uh, what it is item dot description i think so yeah description and for this div first let me write the border class border border primary and p5 p5 this is enough and for the above grid i am going to write gap 5 that means uh, a spacing between all the uh, child elements in the grid let's see how it is looking yeah so we got output like this yeah it is looking much better now first uh, for this grid i am going to write empty uh, 10 or something like that empty 10 okay now uh, i am going to increase the gap gap should be 10 and here i am going to make this as flex flex call flex call and space y 5 5 or 10 you can use anything yeah so it got increased successfully so now i am going to make the div rounded this div rounded normal rounded not complete rounded yeah nice now we have to bring this content marketing at the center of the div at the uh, border area so how to do that so first let's copy this div or we can keep it like this class name is equal to text center it is at the center and minus 
एम टी टेन एम टी टेन इज टू हाई लेट मी राइट एम टी फाइव एम टी फाइव इज ऑल्सो टू हाई लेट मी राइट एम टी एट या नाउ इट इज एट द एक्जैक्टली सेंटर नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू राइट बी जी वाइट बॉर्डर सेकेंडरी बॉर्डर सेकेंडरी एंड ऑल्सो वी नीड टू राइट बॉर्डर दैट्स ऑल हि यू कैन सी वी विल गेट लाइक दिस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू इंग्रीज सम स्टाइलिंग मो सो फॉर द हेच वन टेक्स्ट आई एम गोइंग टू राइट टेक्स्ट टू एक्सएल टेक्स्ट टू एक्सएल एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो राउंडेड राउंडेड लुकिंग क्लीन so here in the deployed version we will be having the uh, paragraph color as uh, text gray class name is equal to text gray 500 or 600 let me write 600 yeah it got changed successfully and here the border color should be actually bg primary and the text color should be bg secondary so border should be bg primary and text should be bg uh, text uh, secondary and also i'm going to increase the gap 20 between the things yeah so looking cool but i'm not sure why we are not getting the exact design the first thing is we have to increase the height and width of the images so let me write uh, 24 24 instead of 20 where is the image 24 here also i'll just write 24 now the image size got decreased increased and i'm going to increase the paragraph size also paragraph text excel yeah now it's somewhat looking to exactly the design Thing not text Excel, it is text MD. No. Thing text MD or text Excel, not understanding. <laughs> text uh, Excel MD Excel. Let me write Excel. Yeah. So here for the H1 text, we are going to have the padding. This is the H1 text, right? PY2. Yeah, here also PY2. Now it's almost similar. We don't have any issues. Only we are left with the uh, what it is uh, animation. So if I hover on this, the paragraph color is changing as well as if I hover on this, the scaling it is getting scaled. That means the height is height and width is increasing. So now what I will do? let me format the document first so this is the div right so here i just write first one is transform transform then i'll just write on hover we are going to scale the div to 105 that means if it is by default it will be 100 we are going to increase it 5 now uh, we need some duration also for the animation duration i am going to write 300 now let's see this is the deployed version yeah so we could able to observe the animation very clearly that's it so the only thing i am feeling uh, weird in this is the paragraph text itself let's make it md and i'll just write md 10 no not looking good uh flex flex call space white 10 i am going to apply yeah this looks much better let me write what is the text size of the uh, paragraph in the deployed version text md only no issue so here also we have used the text md so that's all guys this is about the uh, marketing strategy section so we got i, I think we got the exact design
so if you want uh, these uh, space to be increased between the h1 text as well as this border you can use the margin x that means mx so i am going to use mx 10 to check whether it is working or not yeah it is working uh, let me apply mx uh, 20 yeah this is looking clean so it is looking like box model yeah this is looking much better so even if you hover on the paragraph you can change the text you can just write hover effect for the paragraph if you hover on this the text will become primary here you can see the text color is changing successfully so that's it guys this is about the marketing strategies section not section yeah section itself not page thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the marketing strategies lecture so that means marketing strategies module now in this lecture we are going to work on the why marketing section so this is the last section in the home page so it is very simple we will be having one h1 text with the font size of text 7xl or 8xl then we'll be having one a person thinking animation image then we'll be having some text about the what why marketing what are the advantages of different marketing so now uh, first in the intro section we have missed this animation that means whenever we hover on the get started button we have to get the uh, what it is uh, uh, primary color with the text uh, white only only we have to change the primary color so let me go and write the hover effect for the get started button open intro section so this is the get started button here i am going to write hover on hover i am going to write bg primary that's it now let's see yeah it is changing successfully now uh, at the bottom of the services not services marketing strategy section we are going to have the why marketing so i am going to create a one more component in the home that is why marketing so even if you want to make any changes after the publishing course also not publishing course but developing the deploying the application also you need not to worry about the folder structure and all those things because we'll be having the complete clean and looking folder structure uh yeah why marketing rfce now uh let me go to the index.js after the marketing strategy section i am going to write why marketing format document where it is oh this is the deployed yeah here you can see we got the why marketing uh, section so now at the center of the page we are going to have this text why marketing again why should be in the primary color and marketing should be in the uh, secondary color as per our theme so i'll remove the text and i will write the h1 y then i am going to write bold tag marketing then after the bold tag i am going to write the question mark and this should be class name <coughs> text center then we'll be having the uh, text 7xl or 8xl whatever it may be 7xl and font semi bold and uh, text primary then for the bold tag i am going to write class name is equal to text secondary that's it yeah i think text 8xl we have to give text 8xl and for this parent div i am going to write the class name is equal to we can use either margin or padding because the anyhow the color is white itself so margin 20 yeah why marketing looking clean then we'll be having one animation again this animation we are going to get from the lottie so let's open lottie so let me search thinking so a person should be thinking why marketing 
you can choose any one of the animation so yeah this is the animation what we have used in the deployed version but i am going to use this one in the current version so i think this is looking good uh html copy the lottie player code snippet and create a div div paste it here style as well as the controls now uh, first let's see the output if it looks very odd we are going to write some more css styling for that first let's see how it is looking yeah <laughs> it's looking really very odd now i'm going to write some fixed height for this lotty player so we are having this div right we cannot apply the height for the lotty player we have to apply the height for the parent so for this i'm going to write h hyphen uh, 500px h hyphen you have to write so if i hover on this here you can see height is equal to 500px so tailwind supports up to only h96 96 is nothing but up 96 into 4 it's almost uh, 360 like that so if you want to apply more than 360 or 370 we are going to apply the arbitrary value arbitrary value is nothing but our own value which we will give in the square brackets that's it yeah here you can see now it is looking clean so why marketing then we'll be having some text uh, the text is very simple just copy paragraph again for this paragraph we'll be having some text class name is equal to and uh, so text gray 600 or 500 let me apply 600 text md and also mt10 yeah we got this text now uh, what i will do i am going to copy the next one the answers to all the questions lie in marketing so here this is the complete content area you can copy your own content you can copy your own points bullet points text points all those things so we want only one title and one animation then after you can write your own text based on your requirement and based on your uh, content team all those things so here i will write one h1 text and for this i am going to write uh, class name is equal to text primary because this should be uh, like a uh, side heading text primary text 3 xl now let's see mm, i'm going to make it text 4 xl and font semi bold as well as uh, mt10 yeah now at the last again we'll be having one more paragraph copy format so we can apply the same class what we have applied for the paragraph here that's all so this is about the why marketing section so i think we are done with the home page it's looking pretty good so if you want to apply any animations or uh, hover effects all those things that's up to you anyhow we are going to clean up a lot of things in the end of the course so right now this is enough to get started with the next uh, page that is about page so in the next section we'll be working on the about page thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the about page so first we are going to work on the about intro section so here in the about intro section we are going to have the title of our uh, marketing agency so the title of the marketing agency is she agency and we are having some text like older stronger and wiser and at the left side we will be having one logo so this is my marketing agency logo so where it indicates the growth so at the bottom we will be having what we do 
so in my marketing agency my team is able to develop the web applications mobile applications digital marketing as well as the graphic design then after we'll be having why choose us so there are so many marketing agencies available in the market why the customers or clients choose us so we have to uh, write some points about that so this is about the about section or not about section about page so first we are going to work on the intro section in the about page so the intro section is also based on our theme as i said we'll be working only with uh, two colors the first one is similar to black and uh, blue and the second one is similar to orange so here in the intro section we'll be having the orange gradient so this gradient you will get it from lot many uh, gradient uh, website so anyhow i will provide the link in the description for this uh, gradient color or you can inspect the element and you can copy the gradient so now let's get started with the intro section of the about page i am going to about so here i am going to create a file intro dot js so first i'll write one functional component rfc let's go to the index remove this h1 and create a div then you will have oh no need to write anything first let me import the intro yeah so let's go to the about here you can see we got the intro so first and foremost we have to get the background color with the gradient and rotated shape so if you want to use the normal shape you can use it if you want to use the waves also you can use it that's up to you so i have designed somewhat differently so that's the reason i have designed like a rotated shape so first we have to get the head screen with the height and background color should be orange gradient then we have to rotate it so first we have to get the gradient i am going to inspect this inspect so this is my gradient background color and background image so about intro so i am going to copy the complete uh, properties copy all declarations now what i will do in the about page i am going to write intro so now i am going to write a class name called as the about intro about intro and here i am going to write h screen the height is h screen now i'll go to the index.css because we are applying the background colors so it's too difficult to apply the background colors using the tailwind css that two custom backgrounds with the gradient so that's the reason i'm writing in the normal code about intro about intro i copied all the declarations so this is the background color you can copy from my code or you can copy your own background colors so overflow x should be hidden because we should not scroll the background color so let's see the output ones here you can see we got the background color with what it is uh, overflow x uh, hidden so now we have to rotate it rotating will be the one of the difficult task so we have to inspect this first so this is the selector so this is the class or this is the div we have to rotate so first what i am going to do is first we will write all the things in the inspect element if we find the exact shape we are going to copy the declarations and we are going to paste it let's write so first i am going to write transform uh rotate so by default it is having 45 degrees so let's decrease it so you can play around with it so you first uh, let me write rotate 12 degrees rotate 12 yeah rotate 12 is enough now i am going to write position absolute position absolute uh first i am going to write top minus 20% left 0 right 0 
so you are getting like this now what i will do i am going to increase the not increase decrease the left so it will go out yeah it is going out so left we can use 100 100 px and top should be go up because we should see some white space in this area so you can increase the top that's it I think it is looking much better 35 here you can see almost looking good so we can remove this scroller later so first uh, I am feel it is somewhat looking good uh, let me open the inspect so what we have written so transform 12 degrees position absolute top 35 percent left uh, minus 100 px right to zero so just we have to write all this in the form of tailwind or you can copy all these and using you can anyhow we have written this about intro in the CSS copy all declaration and put it in the direct about intro even if you refresh the page also I think the output would be same yeah the output is same so overflow x hidden uh, important and we need to write for the content also overflow x hidden let's go to the in about not about uh, layout so this is the content right i am going to write overflow x hidden still it is pointing now let me go to the index.css here i am going to write for the html as well as the body for these also i am going to write overflow hidden i think this time it should be hidden yeah there is no scroller now so now i am going to apply some border radius here so it's very simple you just need to apply border radius even if you apply all the sides also you could able to see only bottom right so 50 px yeah looking clean so now we can do the remaining things in the intro section so you can adjust the margins paddings uh, position absolute all the things so if you increase the uh, top or if you decrease the top the size will be changed so i made it 30 so it came down so 30 is also looking good yeah so in the next lecture we are going to work on the uh, intro section text part as well as the uh, logo part thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the what we do section in the about page so what we do is nothing but uh, services itself what kind of services we will provide in our marketing agency so we will provide web development mobile development digital marketing as well as the graphic design so again i am going to provide the resources with the images content all those things for you so i think already we have pasted that uh, we have pasted the images now I am going to copy the content of uh, these things, web development, all those things. So let me open my desktop, Shea agency resources. So what we do? So I am going to copy these items and I am going to create a component in the about, about the component name will be what we do what we do dot js so i am going to write rfce then uh, i am going to paste this array so again in this array we are going to have the simple structure title icon as well as the description so icon should be uh, the file path of the image what we have pasted in the public images folder now uh, first i am going to write one h1 text what we do let me see what color it is having it is having completely text secondary color class name will be text secondary and uh, text eight excel and uh, text center and then after first i am going to apply the class name is equal to mt20 for the div and let's see the output before seeing first of all we have to paste this uh, what we do in the index page of the about 
after the intro we'll be having the index oh not this mm. what we do that's it what happened i'm not able to see the text i don't know why what we do what we do we are having this h1 text uh, why it is not showing z20 let me go to home and come back here why it is not showing let me inspect this oh, okay where it is pointing we have this text i'm not sure let me check i think this is the issue with the overflow property because in the last lecture or before the last lecture we have changed the overflow properties for the content area all those things so somewhere we have written overflow hidden so we should write only overflow x hidden so let me check in the first uh, index.css yeah here you can see so if you write overflow hidden you cannot scroll you just need to write overflow x now i think it should work yeah here you can see now we got the text what we do now uh, i am going to change the font semi bold font semi bold yeah this is also looking good now we are going to loop through the items array and we are going to render this component so let's close this index.js as well as the index.css after this h1 what i am going to do i'll just write items.map before that you just have to write the grid with the grid calls for dot grid dot grid hyphen calls hyphen 4 that means we are dividing the grid into four parts now we are going to map through the items array items dot map and for every iteration we are going to render a div so obviously it will take one part of the column d4 that means column d1 that means grid calls 1 so first let me apply some padding over the grid that means grid item padding 5 so first we will be having the image i think so let me check yeah image title as well as the paragraph that means description so i'll just write img image tag with the src item dot icon now i'm going to write the height and width height is equal to now oh, we have to write using the tailwind classes uh let me write uh, h12 and w12 later we can increase it if it is not enough then we are going to have the title h1 h1 will be item dot title after the h1 will be having the paragraph with item dot description item dot description item dot description so i am going to write a uh, bg white for this and also border and also shadow property let's see how it is looking yeah it's looking like this now we are going to style this first for the grid calls for just apply gap property for every grid call one we are going to have some gap i am going to write gap 10 that means 40 pixels yeah looking good and for this div i am going to apply the class name flex and uh, flex direction will be column flex call and uh, space y you can write 5 uh, or 10 anything yeah this looks clean and now for the h1 text we are going to increase the font size 
text uh, 3xl 3xl and for the paragraph we are going to have class name text gray 500 not 500 text gray 600 and text md yeah looking clean now uh, what we will do for this grid i am going to apply uh, mx uh, 20 hmm nice or we can do as like the previous home page mx 32 yeah so this is looking much better so we got the text and everything looking clean one thing i want to do is i will make this uh, text to 2 excel and here i am going to write this is the flex call right i am going to write items center so everything will be at the center of the div yeah nice now if you observe we are having this background color uh, at the background uh, not background at the back of these uh, grid items and these grid items should be present on top of this primary background so first what i will do after the what we do section i am going to create a div in this div i am going to write class name is equal to uh, h96 w full and bg primary we got like this right now i am going to write md uh, 12 and here for this div i am going to write minus mt or uh, 24 that means we are going to move it top to the primary background that's it like this and we are going to move it some more uh, mt 48 i'm not sure whether it is having or not yeah it is having superb here you can see it's looking clean as like the deployed version <sighs> now uh, what we are left hover effect so when we hover on this we are going to scale it so let me write the transform and when we hover on scale 105 yeah oh this is deployed so it is getting scaled but we are not apply uh, observing any animation so i just write duration 300 or anything let me write 300 yeah now this is looking much better as like the deployed version and we can also increase the image size let me apply uh, 2020 20 and 20 yeah good so we have completed the what we do section also in the about page now we are left with only uh, why choose a section in the about page this is also almost similar so there is only one difference here we are not writing the uh, negative margin for the grid items remaining everything will be same so that's it guys in the next lecture we are going to work on the why choose a section thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the why choose a section in the about page so before getting started with this section first we should have these items why choosers so again i'm going to copy it from the resources folder so this is why choosers so we are having only three first let me create a component in the about the component name will be why choose us dot js rfce react functional component with export yeah so here i'm going to remove these as uh, i choose us and i'll keep it items because in the every array we are going to follow the same now here what i will do first for this div i am going to apply class name is equal to mx32 and then after i am going to have one div with the 
class name mm, bg primary bg primary and uh, h72 h72 is nothing but uh, 288 pixels and w should be full and in this bg primary i am going to write the h1 text y choose us so i am going to make this flex justify center and items center and i am going to increase the size of this h1 text 7xl font semi bold and text white that's it now i am going to bring this y chooses component to the index after the what we do y chooses and let me apply some padding mt 20 <sighs> yeah so we got this y chooses section now underneath of these y chooses we are going to uh, return the content this thing so now what i will do i am going to copy what we have in the what we do so this is the item right copy this and put it here put it here so i think this is item dot image then we will be having uh, item dot title and then we'll be having item dot description and here we should have grid dot grid grid dot grid calls three because we are having only three items grid calls three and uh, what i will do i am going to put this in the grid calls three yeah so here you can see we got this now what i will do i am going to write some padding in this grid calls 3 padding 5 looking clean now i am going to write gap also something like 5 or 10 like that gap 5 gap now for this mx32 what i will do uh, I think uh, instead of MX, we are going to use PX. Mm, okay, first let's try MX and we will write border. Border shadow. Yeah, we got exactly. Here you can see. So we got this header like and we got the items and we got the hover effect. And for this uh, text, I am going to have the bold. Uh, text to excel font semi bold that's all so this is about the what it is uh, why choose a section so let me apply gap 10 yeah now it's looking cool so we are done with the what we do section that means the complete about page we are done so if you want to add some extra content all those things we can add it so about page indicates from where we came that means about our company and why the client should trust our company and what kind of services we provide to the customers from our company so this content you have to put in the Shea agency so i am not ordering you to put only in this format you can choose your own design but you should have at least this content so thank you see you in the next section welcome back guys in this section we will be working on the clients page in our marketing agency application so here you can see right now we have completed the two menus in the navbar home as well as the about now we are in the clients page so clients page is also similar to the remaining two pages so first we will be having the intro section in the intro section we will be having the left side animation and right side some quotes and text about the clients so we work together with our clients so here we have some quotation about the clients so we can change this color as per the background so here uh, to continue our theme and to maintain the consistency i have used the same theme color 
bg primary as the client intro background so here you can see this is the intro background so after the intro section we'll be having the list of clients so till now what we have uh, served that means if this is the marketing agency so this marketing agency provided services uh, these clients to these clients so i have uh, used all these top norms here instagram spotify all those things so you can use your own companies so this is the slider so here you can use the carousel you can use normal sliders anything so right now we have designed a simple client page like this so here we can put some of the client reviews also so that's we will do in the current section so this is just the prototype in the deployed version so let's start building the clients intro section uh we are done with the about as well as the home now we are left with clients first i am going to create the intro section intro dot js as like the previous pages rfc functional component now i am going to bring this component to the uh, clients main page remove this div and we are going to have the intro that's it now i'll open google chrome and i'll check whether we got the intro section yeah we got the intro section so now let's open that intro remove the text so first and foremost we have to write a uh, head screen head screen bg primary we got the background now in that we have the uh, grid so in that grid first in the first part we are going to have the animation second part is related to the text so first i am going to make this as grid grid and uh, grid calls 2 grid calls 2 now what i will do first let me write the first part Do oh sorry. Do and this is the second part. So in the first part, we are going to have the animation. Let me copy the animation from the Lottie. So open Lottie. here i'm going to type clients so i think this is the animation that we have used in the deployed version yeah it's almost similar so just copy this click on the html copy the lottie player and put it inside the div oh not first div not second div it is the first div so remove the style prop as well as the controls why it came to the second part okay i think it should be inside the first part yeah now it's clean so i'm going to decrease the height of this first part class name is equal to h96 this is the maximum and we are going to bring it center by using the item center prop yeah so now we got this at the center so now what i will do i am going to uh, copy this text we work with our clients we work together with our clients and i'll put it in the h1 tag uh, which is in the second part 
so here uh, work should be in the orange color and uh, client should be in the green color work should be in the uh, orange color and uh, client should be in the green color so first for this h1 what i am going to do is uh, let me write text 7xl or 8xl let's write 7xl font semi bold and uh, for b i am going to write class name is equal to bg secondary and for this b i am going to write class name is equal to bg green 500 let's check the output once oh it's not bg it's uh, text sorry for the mistake so instead of bg let's make it text yeah now this looks clean and for the remaining we are going to have the white color so text white and make this 8 excel yeah now we got as per the deployed and uh, i'm also going to increase the height of this uh, animation so it's looking very small compared to the text part so what i'll do i'm going to make this uh, arbitrary value in which i'm going to make it 500 px so it looks better yeah this looks clean now now uh, in the next lecture we are going to work on the uh, showing clients data so before that first we have to uh, add this curved border uh, bottom of the intro div so how we can do means first uh, what i'll do mm. Yeah, in the clients uh, component, uh, clients list component only we are going to do that. So we are going to have a top uh, div which is having the background as a primary and with the border radius. So in the next lecture, we'll be working on the displaying clients list in the clients page. Thank you. Welcome back guys. In the last lecture, we have completed the background for the intro section in the about page. Now in this lecture, we'll be working on the intro section logo part as well as the text part. So it is very simple as like the home page, we are going to create a grid and if in that grid, we are going to divide it into two parts. The first part is for the logo and the second part is for the text. If you observe in the home, we have written first part as text and the second part as logo. If in the about, we are going to replicate it not replicated we are going to reverse it because we should have some difference in the every page now let's go to the intro about intro so you can close all the things now so let's come out of this because it is a position absolute you should not write anything in that yeah so now i am going to create a div grid dot grid calls to so first div is for the logo part and second div is for the text part <coughs> again we are going to get the logo from the lottie animation so i am going to get the logo with similar colors orange so anyhow we have opened the lottie at the left side not left side right side so I think uh, it is related to somewhat uh, a graph or something like that. Let me type graph. Graph. Mm, I hope we should get the exact one. Mm, no, in the first page we don't have that. Let me go to the second page. think we have to get it in orange color no we don't have it and what we can do i'm not sure what i have typed for this in the deployed version let me check and update sorry guys actually this is not the lottie image i got confused because we are using lottie animations everywhere so this is the normal image which i have downloaded from the internet so now i have redownloaded it about intro.svg so i am going to open it in the folder 
and I'll copy this and I will paste it in our uh, resources or direct uh, mm, where we can do Shea agency, Shea agency projects yeah Shea agency SRC uh, pages about so here only I will paste about intro dot svg now what I will do I am going to import that import about intro you can write any name from dot slash from dot slash about intro dot svg you have to write the exact time uh, not exact time exact name it is about intro iphone svg now you can use one src tag what is this dot slash about intro dot svg oh, it is throwing the error yeah now we don't have any error so let me write the image img tag img src is equal to you just need to write the exact thing about intro let's see the output yeah so here you can see you got like this so now this thing got rotated okay i have paged it in the first div which is position absolute yeah now it is perfect and we are going to have the z index for this class name is equal to z10 yeah looking good and we are going to make it center and we are going to also have the fixed height and width for this class name is equal to uh, let me write h96 and w also 96 and for this grid I am going to write item center item center yeah and also I'll write min h screen nice so let me write justify center mm, okay already we have written two divs right so the justify center may not work so we are going to align it later first we have to uh, add these text also so in the second h1 part uh, second part we are going to write the text content h1 or project title in the white color shade and c and it should be text 8 excel i think so class name is equal to text 8 excel again we have to write the z index class name z10 yeah it's looking good and font semi bold font semi bold text white then after we are going to write one hr then we are going to write one more h1 with the caption older stronger wiser that's all so now uh, for this div i am going to write max w max Uh, okay max w max yeah now it's looking clean so i'm going to make this flex and uh, flex call flex direction will be call flex call and uh, space y 10 mm, 10 is too high let me apply 5 yeah so this looks clean now what i will do for this view i am going to write class name flex and justify center 
yeah looking clean and i'm going to increase some height and width so let me apply 500 px height and uh, 500 px width yeah now it is looking exactly as the deployed version somewhat smaller height and width so here i'm going to change this uh, text color class name is equal to not text 8 excel text uh, md or excel text white that's it yeah now it's looking much better so that's it guys this is about the intro section in the about page so then in the next section we'll be working on the what we do section in the about page thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the displaying clients list in the clients page so in the previous lecture we have uh, completed the intro section in the clients page so now i am going to create a one more component in the clients folder that is clients list or clients data you can call it anything clients list dot js so i'm going to give this uh, design uh, decision up to you only because we are having numerous ways to represent the clients list some people will use the carousel some people will use the normal arrays that means list some people will use the grid formats like that so that's up to you we i'm going to provide the basic design that's it so clients list now i'll first i will remove this clients list and uh, what i will do i am going to have one div in this div i am going to have bg bg primary and for this div let me add the height h72 now what i will do uh, and also uh, rounded b full that means bottom radius so we are not applying the radius for the top level we will uh, we will applying a uh, radius for only bottom rounded b is nothing but border bottom right radius border bottom left radius now let's go to the index and after the intro we are going to have the clients list clients list that's all now let's see you got it right but it's looking too high now uh, let me increase uh, decrease the height so we can use uh, h44 i'm not sure whether it is having class or not yeah it is having yeah 44 is much better now in this area we are going to have the clients list that means a simple slider where we will have the uh, left arrow and right arrow so if you click on the left arrow we are going to show the next client and if you click on the left arrow we are going to show the previous client that's all so first we have to get the clients data so i'm going to open the resources in my desktop share agency resources so this is the clients data yeah so now i am going to copy the entire clients data and i'll paste it here so as i said we have numerous ways to represent the clients data here you can show only one client data and we can have the next and previous buttons or we can show two two or we can show three three so now what i am going to do is in the deployed version we have only uh, two but in the current version i am going to make it only one so we are going to show only one client data in the uh, actual screen so when we click on the next it is going to show the next client uh, data so it is very simple uh, what i am going to do means first uh, go to the clients list create a flex the flex should be uh, item center we don't require this only we will re we require only justify center justify center 
and now i am going to have the div in this div what i am going to do means first i am going to have uh, how we can represent so we can choose logo uh, title as well as the paragraph so this design only i am going to do so for that first i am going to create one more div and here i am going to make this as flex flex and uh, spacex 10 spacex 10 and in this flex first i am going to have the h1 so this is the h1 text and here i am going to type for initial purpose i am going to take clients of 0 of 1 that means clients of name so i am going to take the first index later i am going to write the logic dynamically so first just for the testing purpose i am going to write clients of 0 dot name then uh, we are going to have the image image of oh, img img so here obviously it is it will be clients of 0 dot image then obviously bottom of this div because it is a flex and this thing uh, will be shown as side by side bottom of this we are going to have the paragraph paragraph will be obviously clients of 0 dot description clients of 0 dot description and for this div i am going to have the styling class name is equal to bg white bg white and border we are going to have the have it later let me apply that just shadow first shadow lg or md whatever it may be and p5 and it should have width only up to 500 px 500 px so this is the flex and for this h1 i am going to have the class name is equal to bg secondary or not bg secondary bg primary not bg it is text right text primary text primary font uh, semi bold and uh, text 2xl or 3xl let's apply 2xl first then for the image we are going to have the class name uh, we can apply a uh, big uh, what is uh, what, that means uh, high high height and high pa uh, width also because we will be displaying only one client per page uh, h32 w32 and for this p tag i am going to have text gray 600 text md and md 10 that's fine so let me check the output once yeah so here you can see we got the output like this uh, we didn't got the image i'm not sure why okay mm. i think image okay it is having logo not image so here it is having logo so let me change it to logo that's all yeah so now i am going to align these things also uh what is it uh, where it is flex flex i am going to write items center item center and now uh, i am going to bring this logo right side that means justify between not center it is should, should be between border so we got oh not for this we should have the border for the above div yeah so now we have to get this div to the top so here we should have some space of this uh, area so simple we should have the negative top margin so you can use for the parent as well as for the this also so let me use for the parent itself minus mt uh, let me apply 24 
mm, let me apply some more 44 yeah this looks clean so this is our first client so now what i will do here i am going to have two buttons so if i click on the button we should get the next one or else we can get uh, we can have the buttons here also here and here so next and previous slides so that's the way we are going to uh, do so in the next lecture we'll be working on displaying the slides dynamically thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the displaying clients clients list dynamically based on the selected slide button not slide selected client so first what i'm going to do is uh here i'm going to create a use state hook i think in this course first time i am using a logic so here selected client index selected client index and here it will be set selected client index set selected client index and initially it will be zero because anyhow we are going to show the first client so i'll just write u state initially it will be zero now i am going to get two buttons u state is not defined buttons are nothing but arrows from the library what we are using for the icons i think it is remix icons let me close this and here i am going to have remix icons remix icons and let me type next next is not there here mm, forward so it's not matching our theme that means matching it's not matching our requirement mm. we should get like these icons yeah arrow right and uh, arrow left so we can use these things arrow right and arrow left so first i'm going to have arrow right i'll copy this now what i will do so this is the flex and justify center and here we are displaying the image and right side of the image and left side of the image i am going to add two icons if it is a uh, right side we are going to show right arrow that means arrow line arrow right line if it is left side we are going to have i think it will be the same class let me write arrow left line arrow left line yeah once let's check this yeah here you can see we got it now i'm going to keep this at the bottom so it will be justify end justify end where it has gone oh not justify end items end yeah so here you can see we got these buttons now uh, let me apply some space so this is the div right i am going to have space x uh, phi space x phi mm, or else we can use space x 10 yeah now i am going to uh, style these icons a bit So first I'm going to make this class as class name because this is the react we are going to get errors if we use class not errors warnings class name here also it should be class name so first I'm going to have um, text for excel here also text for excel the size got increased now we are going to make the colors change text gray 600 here also text gray 
600 yeah and it should be having some border or uh, something like rounded radius or background color like that so right now let's make this uh, cursor pointer later we will style it cursor pointer and here also cursor pointer yeah and when we hover on this we are going to have some background hover uh, bg gray uh, 700 oh not for this we should get only for icons yeah we are getting and uh, what i will do on hover i am going to have p5 and on hover i am going to have text white text white is not apply okay it's text white text white as well as this is not p5 this is just p2 yeah and also uh, I'm going to write rounded on hover rounded and it should be on hover yeah this looks clean so just copy this all classes and put it for this thing also so later ch we will change based on the requirement so first of all let's keep these things yeah so now we have to write on clicks uh, i don't know why this is getting shaking uh, after hovering on this let me write overflow x hidden overflow x hidden somewhere it is getting mm, spacex if i remove space let me check what will happen still it is uh, getting shake okay i leave that uh, as of now so later we will uh, uh, fix it so first we are going to write the on click so when we are going to click this next button we are going to show the next client that means if you observe the array after the slack we have the twitter so we are going to get the twitter so if you click on the previous for the twitter we are going to get the slack and for the first item we are going to hide the previous button and for the last item we are going to hide the next button because even if you click the previous button it doesn't make any sense because this is the first item in the client so how we can do that so it is very simple so we have this i right just copy this i element so let me remove these hover classes it is disturbing lot remove all these hover classes now i'll copy this i element and I'll write the condition if selected client index is not equal to equal to zero, then only we are going to show that icon. And here, if selected client index, selected client index is not equal to equal to clients dot length minus one, then we are going to show this thing now let's see the previous button should be hidden now here you can see we got the previous button hidden so we can have only next button so when we click on the next we are going to get this but we have to write the logic for that so this is the i write i am going to have the on click on click so it is very simple we just need to write one arrow function set selected index is equal to okay 
so let me write the function first because we have to check some logic so this should be previous so the function name should be previous previous and this on click function name should be next on click function name should be next now i'm going to execute these two functions now const uh first i'm going to write next is equal to so this is the arrow function so you have to write only one thing set selected index is equal to selected index plus 1 if it is next and i am going to write const previous is equal to set selected index selected index minus 1 so first i am going to navigate from slack to the last item so the first one is slack obviously we cannot go back here because we don't have the back button now i am going to click the next button until the github so in the uh, github page and in the github client i should not see the next button so let's see now so we got okay okay we should we have to change the index here so here we are using zero directly so instead of zero you have to write selected client index selected client index here also selected client index yeah now i'm going to click the next let me refresh next so it's not even changing i don't know why okay this is on click yeah now it should work i hope yeah twitter instagram spotify messenger cognizant github yeah here you can see in the github we don't have the next button and one more thing is if you observe the screen the screen is getting uh, shaking here you can see based on the height it is getting shaking so now what i will do i am going to have some fixed height this is the div right bg white i am going to have same h also 500 px 500 is too high let's make it 300 300 is too small <laughs> let's make it 4 yeah 400 is better and here uh yeah it is not even shaking now it's looking very clean yeah these are the clients so if you want to add any bottom content also after these clients it is you can add it i think it is looking very simple and compared to the about page and home page we don't have the enough content in the clients so i'll bring some content by the end of this course don't worry we are going to make this uh, client's page also beautiful as like the about and home so thank you guys so if you want to add your any own content in the client's page you can add it so trust me i am going to have uh, some content in the end of the course thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have discussed about the displaying the clients list in the clients page so now in this lecture i'm going to modify that uh, design a little bit because it is looking so less compared to the previous uh, about and home pages so we are going to modify some design and we are going to add some extra content after that so first what i'm going to do is instead of displaying one uh, client in the row i'm going to display three clients and we are going to have these arrow icons as it is and bottom of that uh, three clients we are going to have the carousel uh, style look that means we are going to keep the dots based on the number of clients so when we click on the dot it is going to represent the exact client suppose if we have the nine clients we can display nine dots here if we click on the sixth dot the clients list will start from sixth index here like this way we are going to design so it will look somewhat modern so first of all uh, we are going to make this uh, row into three parts so first uh, what i am going to do means mm, this 
this is the array right so it is having the bg white shadow all those things so i'm going to just copy this array or oh, not array this is their div and first i'll copy this and i'm going to create a grid here grid and here i'm going to make it grid calls 3 grid calls 3 so here what i'm going to do means first i will paste the array as it is now let's see the output there will be yeah it is starting from here so now what i'll do i'm going to copy this again i'm going to give an array here dot map item yeah just item and i'm going to return the content so here instead of selected index just write item item here also item and here also item i'll tell why i have why i'm writing item here because per row we have to get three clients that means initially our selected item index will be zero so in this array what we are going to do means clients of selected index comma again clients of selected index plus one so you can write this dynamically so i am not going to waste the time so that's the reason i kept it like this clients of selected index dot two a plus two selected index uh, plus two so initially it is going to display zeroth client one th client and tooth client that means a uh, client at zero index one index and two index so we have to get three clients now as per the our code yeah here you can see we got three clients now i am going to apply some uh, margin and padding so before that first uh, let's change this width property let's make it 400 and height also 400 so it looks like this now i am going to have the gap for the grid so this is the grid right i am going to write gap or 10 or 20 let me write 10 yeah this looks clean now i am going to bring this slack right side and i am going to keep the image left side with applying the negative margin so half of the image should be in the white color half of the image should be in this bg primary color so this is the div right so first i am going to keep the image at the first and for this image i am going to apply minus md uh, 10 minus md 10 let me apply 12 let me apply 14 and apply the z index 20 so it is getting overlapped i don't know why let me check mm, this is grid okay this is image image is having the z index 20 and for these also i'm going to write z index 20 or z index 100 still it is not showing i think for this it is already having z index z index 100 still it is not having and for the grid also i am going to have now z index not working i'm not sure why the z index is not working so because we have applied the z index for these white colors <laughs> so let's keep it as it is we'll discuss that later let me refresh so it is looking like this 
um, where we have written minus mt14 i'll come up with a solution later because uh, anyhow we have wasted the time uh, in the last lecture for these clients so i'm going to wrap this up and also um, what we can do means we need to change the logic also so before changing the logic we have to adjust some style so height is uh, not required up to 400 let's make it 350 itself 350 i think it would be better yeah 350 looks good now what i will do uh, first i am going to uh, if we click on the next okay we are going to do yeah this is fine so the only thing is uh, if you click on next twitter should come here it is coming 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 yeah so here you can see if i click on the next button when github is showing it is getting crashed this is because we are appending uh, before two indexes that means here you can see suppose if the active index uh, we are having around uh, 1 2 3 9 clients i think so we have to stop the next button until the index is 7 so if the index is 7 we should not show the next button so now what i am going to do is this is the next button right i am going to write here the condition if selected client for selected client index is less than 7 then only we have to show and previous yeah previous we need not to do anything suppose uh, let me refresh the page why oh, it is not working i think i have written the invalid symbol yeah not greater than it is less than changed 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 i think still it is showing for the github it is crashed i think it should be six let me count so initially selected count will selected index will be zero now one two three four yeah i think it should be just four now let's see yeah so it is not having the click now so even all even we can hide that button so this is the next right yeah instead of writing the condition here we can hide it directly there if selected index equal to equal to okay if selected index is less than 4 then only you have to show that yeah now we don't have the next button yeah now we don't have the previous button so this is working exactly as per our expectations so now we have to do one more thing here so at the bottom we are going to show some circles based on the number of clients so first uh, let me calculate the number of clients 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 7 means we are stopping at 4 yeah that is good now uh, after this grid after this flex i am going to have div again with the class name flex class name is equal to flex then we will be having the again one more div so here i am going to have an array simple i will write one two three uh one two three four five six seven so we are having seven right dot map oh we should be in the curly braces dot map item so we are going to show a div yeah so in this we don't have any content we just have to write the class name 
क्लास नेम इज इक्वल टू बी जी ग्रे फोर हंड्रेड हेच फोर डब्ल्यू फोर राउंडेड फुल राउंडेड फुल एंड स्पेस एक्स टू सो ओ नॉट हियर यू हैव टू राइट द स्पेस एक्स टू एट द फ्लैक्स ओ हियर ओनली वी कैन राइट इट नॉट हियर एक्चुअली हियर हियर ऑल्सो इट शुड बी क्लास नेम फ्लैक्स बिकॉज इट शुड बी वन बै साइड बै साइड एंड आई एम गोइंग टू कीप दिस कंप्लीट ड्यू एट द सेंटर ऑफ द पेज सो जस्टिफाई सेंटर and also i am going to apply some margin mt 10 or 20 so let me apply 10 first superb here you can see we got it i am going to decrease the background color weight let me apply 200 mm 3 yeah so now uh, we are going to have the cursor pointer for these dots cursor pointer and now what i will do i am going to make this in an array or oh, not in an array in a curly braces because we are going to write some conditional rendering here so if selected client index equal to equal to here also i am going to write index selected client index equal to equal to index uh, index we are going to have the style border border secondary now let's see i think uh, border 2 let me write border 2 yeah here you can see it got highlighted and i'm also going to decrease the uh, font weight not font weight bg weight yeah here you can see now it is got highlighted yeah it is changing fine now now what i'm going to do means even if i hover on this i'm going to get an animation and even i can click on this to change the selected index so let me format the document so first let me hover on this when we hover on we are going to have scale 105 transform and uh, duration 300 let's see why it is not working transform okay i didn't write transition transition all why the transform is not working mm okay let me write on click first on click i am going to write set uh, set uh, selected client index is equal to index that's it now let's see yeah it is changing perfectly okay so here also we have to show up to 4 only okay where it is yeah yeah that's looking clean okay even we have the next one yeah we can show up to 5 then yeah so here we don't have the next button so we can uh, come backward yeah this looks clean and here i am going to have the height and width increased for the active thing so this is the active thing right h5 w5 
for remaining it will be h4 w4 and for the active one it will be h5 w5 yeah now we can observe the animation c yeah this is looking clean so that's it guys this is about the client page in the next lecture we are going to have some more content in the client thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to create the numbers component in the client page that means we are going to show the list of numbers like how many projects we have done how many number of clients we have till day and how many number of ongoing projects like that so here we are going to uh, have a div with the uh, um, secondary color that means orange color so in that orange color we are going to have the complete text to white and we are going to represent the numbers so first uh, i am going to have a numbers component here actually we don't have this component in the deployed version so we are going to create it new right from our own design numbers so clients list here i am going to have numbers so obviously we will be having the class name is equal to px32 and then i am going to have a div with the class name bg secondary now i am going to have div so this will be flex and uh, spacex uh, you can write anything later we will adjust based on the output so here first i am going to have total number of clients so i am going to have flex flex call spacex space y because it is flex call space y uh, phi so first i am going to have h1 and i am going to put a sample number 152 class name is equal to uh first one will be font semi bold and uh, text 7xl 7xl and uh, text white so 152 and bottom of this we are going to have one more h1 text with the smaller text size and we are going to represent it as clients and here also we are going to have class name is equal to text white font semi bold the only change we will be having is text uh, let me write 2xl or 3xl so 2xl i will write so let's check the output once yeah here you can see we are getting the output so we should have exactly uh, from here to here so based on the previous design so now what i am going to do first let me add the padding for this bg primary p5 looking clean and we should have uh, some more padding here let me write 40 okay 40 is not enough i think we should write some more before that let me write mt 20 yeah so 152 and here uh, we should avoid this in that case let me write 44 44 is also not having um what we can do means 52 okay so i think these spaces we are missing because it is the arrow where we have the uh what it is uh, hmm, uh next and previous things in the above version that means in the above slider suppose if we have this we can get like this so i think uh 52 is enough because here you can see if we have the arrows it is looking good so it is almost center of the page so let's leave about that let's refresh the page and now what i am going to do is uh this is 52 right and i am going to make it 9xl the height should be uh text size should be more yeah 152 clients and uh, then i am going to copy this and here i am going to write uh 485 projects 485 projects 485 projects 
and now I am going to write 24 locations so this is all related to the numbers so let's see how it is looking yeah so now what I am going to do is I am going to make it center uh, not center between so anyhow this is the flex right I am going to have justify between yeah this is looking clean and we are going to have some rounded thing rounded yeah so even if you uh, remove the font semi bold also I think it will look good uh, let me check while removing the font semi bold for first one yeah we need to remove the font semi bold so wherever there is font semi bold here you have to remove it that means it should be empty yeah so this is looking clean and here uh, we don't require space uh, space wi-fi I think 2 is enough yeah so here above this we are going to have some text so until uh, fr until today we have done these things like that so let me write some sample text or some lorem ipsum text so let me write lorem ipsum or else uh, I'll write h1 text until today we have done yeah you got this text I am going to write this some styling class name is equal to text uh, to excel and uh, text uh, gray 600 and uh, my yeah until today we have done 152 clients or we have done or uh, we can call it like we have provided our services to so we can call it as until today until today we have provided our services to yeah this is looking clean so i think our client page is also looking clean as like the about and uh, home so now we are left with only contacts page so in the next section we'll be working on the contacts and later we'll be completely focusing on the responsiveness thank you welcome back guys in the last section we have completed the clients page so now in this section we are going to work on the contact page so actually we don't have the prototype in the deployed version for the contact us page so we are going to develop our own so let me open the deployed version yeah here you can see we have only three pages in the deployed so we are going to have one more extra page in our current version that is contact us page so usually for every portfolio website or for every marketing website in the contact us page we will have two things the first one will be our address and the second one will be a contact form for them for the uh, customers or whatever it may be so they will give their uh, details like first name last name email and they will uh, query so i got one design from the internet which suits our theme so here you can see so for this we are going to apply our bg primary and for this uh, buttons we are going to have the bg secondary so it's almost similar to our theme so i am going to apply kind of this design so first uh, i am going to have the contact folder so already we have the contact folder index now i am going to create two components in this the first one will be address address.js and the second one will be contact form so now uh, in both the components I am going to create the functional components let me close everything address.js rfce address now let me open the contact form rfce contact form now I will open the index.js and remove uh, 
the default existing content and i am going to create dot grid and uh, grid calls 2 grid calls 2 so we will apply the padding later first let me apply so by default i am going to apply px32 so here first i am going to have uh, in dot so anyhow we will be having one div right so for every grid calls two we will have uh, one one div so now uh, i am going to render the address component first so address component will take one part in the grid calls two and the second part will be for contact form contact form so let's check the output once contact yeah here you can see we got the address form we got the contact form so now we are going to design the address first so later i'm going to design the contact so if you observe uh, the address is having a rounded corner uh, background color so which is our theme color then we are having some get in touch uh, as well as the uh, some text for the contact info then we are having three uh, things location mail phone here we are having our social icons facebook twitter youtube and linkedin so we can get rid of these icons or if you want to add the icons you can add it that's up to you so these things are important location email and phone so first i am going to create the content so let me go to the address yeah so i am going to create a div it will be having bg primary and rounded 3xl rounded 3xl now it should be complete flex call flex call and i'm going to write space y uh, around 10 space y 10 so the first text will be get in touch get in touch and class name will be uh, text uh, to excel and i'm going also going to have padding uh, 10 or 2, uh, 5 so let me apply 10 first p10 p10 so after the get in touch we are having some text so i'm going to have some text like paragraph Hmm, what kind of text we can give is a search engine marketing agency that deliver so here uh, we are also going to write the same thing so she agency is a she agency is a digital marketing agency digital marketing agency we provide marketing and support not support uh, development services development services now bottom of that we are going to have three divs so in every div we are going to have an icon and some text so first let's see what output we got in the screen yeah this thing so it's coming good so after completing everything we can write it later so first of all let me change the color to white text white yeah so text to excel i am going to write font semi bold and uh, i am going to make it text 3xl text 3xl yeah this looks clean uh, now what we can do oh sorry so we are having the location mail and phone icons so first we are going to get it i'm going to create the first div which is location div so here first we are going to have the uh, location icon so i'm going to open the 
remix icons remix icons so i'll just type location yeah here you can see we have the location copy this and put it inside a div so create a one more div for safe site because if you want to apply the background color that would be better div and this should be class flex class name should be flex and spacex 5 and then in the second part we are going to write our actual address p so i am going to write my address 2 dash 3 dash 647 647 by a by 186 by 5 and i am going to write one more p tag Hyderabad Amber Pet and P tag India. So this should be items center. Let's check the output how we got it. So nice, it's looking good not exactly for as per the design but somewhat looking good so now uh, we are going to have some background for the div which is having the icon and for the icons we are going to use the secondary color so it's very simple so this is the div right so first for this div i am going to have some uh, height and width uh, h10 h10 w10 and bg primary and i'm going to decrease the opacity 50 oh so if it decrease the opacity decrease uh, decrease the opacity it will decrease the icon opacity also so first uh, let's uh, not bother about the background color let's add the color to icon class name so let me increase the font size of the icon text to 2xl and text secondary yeah this looks clean and 2xl is not enough let's make it 5xl yeah 5xl is looking good hmm. so we are going to have a similar kind of orange for the background which is having the light uh, weight so i am going to have bg tomato we don't have bg orange orange also we don't have i think yeah we have orange and i am going to have 200 so actually h10 okay so these h10 or w10 are not enough for the 6 uh, 5xl so let's make it 4xl yeah and here it's not 200 i'm going to make it 50 200 is high 50 is also not looking good mm, so let me write one thing i just write orange here and I'm going to decrease the opacity. Yeah, now it's looking cool. And so we are going to have some padding. P2. Oh, not here. Here we are going to have P2. So let me increase, let me decrease the size to 3XL. Yeah, P2 as well as rounded. Yeah, so here I'm going to increase the H12 to W12, H12 and W12. Hmm. Somewhat looking good. Yeah, so now what I will do, I'll copy this and I'll replicate it for the remaining things. So the next one will be mailers. 
so the first one will be visitors and the second one will be mailers so what i will do i am going to make this uh, instead of p i am going to make this h1 mailers class name is equal to font semi bold font semi bold text excel yeah this looks clean and here also i am going to type instead of this i am going to write h1 same as like the this thing i'll copy this and i'll paste it above visitors visitors and mailers so here i'm going to change the icon so ri map uh, something it is there i'm going to make it uh, mail yeah mail we have ri mail line just copy this class name that's it replace it and the last one will be i think it will be phone phonus so it is having phonus and in the mailers you just need to put the mail address that's it so i am going to provide my mail prakash1958 gmail.com and here i am going to write phone number so call us call us so here i am going to put the number Double nine eight nine six four nine two seven eight. So now let's see the output ones. Yeah, it's almost looking good. The only thing is we need to decrease some more opacity for the background colors. So I'll make it low. Hmm. almost good let's make it some more yeah let's increase some not here it's here i'll decrease yeah i feel this is better copy this and put it here as well as for the first one super and for the visitors something went wrong in the last one yeah here i am going to remove the second one india here only i will keep hyderabad amberpet india i want only one line for everything yeah super now it's looking very clean so get in touch and this is the normal example and this is the fields so almost looking good and i am going to make it everything center so if you want to make it everything center for these also you're going to apply the class name flex and uh, justify center then everything will be center okay it is taking full width so no issue after applying the form we can adjust the alignments thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the contact form in the contact us page so contact form is also very simple so it is having a title like send a message first name last name email phone number and message so let's close this and create the contact form so let's see here i am going to have gap 10 or 20 so let me apply 20 now i am going to have the one form here i am going to remove the action yeah so first i will put one h1 text so the text one text name will be send a message send a message then i am going to have one div 
so these two should be class name flex spacex 10 that's it and here we are going to have two input fields input so type is equal to text border oh we have to write everything in the class names now so before that first let me write the placeholder placeholder is equal to first name first name then everything will be in the class names yeah so first i am going to apply border border then uh, py2 and px5 uh, let's check the output once how it is looking yeah we got output like this so but the expected is not like this so we are going to have a uh, placeholder in the gray color and we should have some blue light blue color as the background for the input fields so placeholder bg blue so let's make it 100 let's make it 100 and uh, i'm going to write on focus on focus outline should be none we should not get the black color on focus outline none yeah we are not getting the background color on uh, border on focus so now uh, let me increase the padding py3 and also it should be rounded rounded uh, lg i'm going to write yeah this looks clean so now what i will do so this input field is almost looking similar except the background color so i'm going to change the background color mm. so let me apply 50 bg blue 50 yeah this looks better compared to the last one hmm i think we don't need require we don't require the border also because anyhow we are applying the background color yeah this is good so i can type it and i'm also going to change the text color text gray 500 cool now just copy this input field and replicate it for the last name replicate for the last name let's see the output yeah we got first name last name so before that i am going to have index right i will write at least mt32 yeah this is looking very clean and now uh, let me go to the contact form so for this h1 text i'll write class name is equal to text 3xl font semi bold and uh, text secondary text secondary let's see send a message text 3xl not excel and also mb5 at least mm, i think we are having these in the normal bg's primary color so let's make it bg primary and text 4xl i am going to apply yeah so now this is looking clean and first name is done last name is done now at the bottom we should have the uh, email and phone number so we are going to replicate this div i'll just replace the placeholders 
so this is instead of first name i am going to write email email and here instead of last name i am going to write the phone number phone number and then at the last i am going to replicate the div once more and instead of input field i am going to re replace it with the text area text area and for the text area we should have the rows property so you can apply the rows uh, 5 or 10 like that so i am going to apply 5 for the example so let me check the output so we got the first name last name email phone number and uh, here i am going to make it as uh, query query or something like text let me open message we call it as message so here uh, i am going to replace the first name with message and here i am not going to make it as flex even if it is flex i am going to make the class name w100 it should take the complete width i think we don't have w100 in the tailwind it should be w full so if it is w full what it is taking means it is taking why then the input fields are taking half width so for the input fields also i'm going to apply w full w full w full and here also w full yeah super now it is perfect and here for the text area okay so this is flex call right okay we don't have the flex call anywhere i am going to make it if it is not there yeah for the form we can apply class name is equal to flex flex call space y phi why it is not applying okay space y yeah so let's make it 10 good now it's looking very clean and neat so first name last name email phone number and message so at the last we are going to have a button with our background uh, secondary color so that is submit i think so let me check send a message so we are having the button name as send a message we are going to create that button after this div so let me create a button send a message here i am going to write the styling for this button class name is equal to text white bg secondary and uh, px5 py2 and uh, rounded xl rounded it should be rounded rounded xl let's see the output yeah superb so i want a uh, maximum width of maximum content so i just write max w max i don't want the extra width that's it so i want some some more height and i don't want this excel py3 yeah this looks better now so first name last name email uh, phone number and send message even you ke you can keep this send message here so that would be better so if you want to keep like that you have to put this button in the uh sorry you have to put it in the flex dot flex sorry dot flex dot justify end that's it now we got the button at the left side so i think we are good in the shape so let me check in the normal thing so send a message uh 
think uh, only we don't have is uh, icons we don't require that so if you want to put you can put it social icons so that's up to you so that's it guys this is about the contact us page so i think uh, we are done with the normal pages except the responsiveness so in the mobile in the desktop view now all the pages are perfect so the only thing is we have to work on the responsiveness and that is one of the complex thing because we have lot of complex designs so that we have to uh, replicate or represent in the mobiles without losing any clarity or without losing any content so from the next section onwards we are going to work on the responsiveness thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we will be focusing on the how to make the websites and pages responsive using the tailwind css so in this lecture we will completely discussing about how tailwind responsiveness works how tailwind media queries work so from the next lecture onwards we are going to make it one by one every page responsive so first let me open the tailwind uh, media queries or we can call it as breakpoints tailwind breakpoints so breakpoints are nothing but the screen sizes so to understand this uh, i am going to create one more a duplicate file in the pages so we are going to test all the tailwind responsive classes and then after from the next lecture we are going to apply it on the uh, about page clients page all those things so i am going to create a page called as the temp temp.js so here i'll write rfc react functional component export so now for this temp page i am going to add a uh, route it is also a temporary route so i'll copy this contact and i'll replicate it for the temp temp <coughs> it is not even showing the snippet i don't know why let me import it manually import temp from dot slash pages slash temp so temp dot js does not match the corresponding disk let me check it should be temp small temp yeah now it is working so now let me open the localhost slash temp not this temp yeah so here you can see we got the temp now uh what i will do i am going to make it temp.js so i'll apply the class name flex item center and justify center so i am going to make the entire content at the center of the page so i'll remove this uh, normal temp text and i'm going to create one h1 uh hello so i'm going to make it as hello now i'm going to apply some styling for this text a excel i'll write min h screen so minimum height of this uh, div is screen so it will be at the center yeah so now our goal is to make this hello text somewhat smaller size in the mobile view we don't want this much of size in the mobile view because the mobile screen a uh, maximum width hardly uh, 400 to 500 pixels so it is almost taking more than 550 pixels if i uh, copy this and if i go to the mobile view let me open any one of the mobile yeah so here you can see yeah it is somewhat looking good but we don't want this much of text in the mobile view i want to decrease the font size of this hello in the mobile view how we can do that so to re to resolve this issue we can use the tailwind media queries or else we can call it as break fonts as i said so open these docs screens so customizing screens so tailwind by default provides five different breakpoints sm md lg xl and 2xl so for every breakpoint there will be a width so sm up to 650 md up to 768 pixels lg up to 1024 pixels xl up to 1280 pixels and 2xl up to 1536 so this is min width so we should not use the min width we have to use the maximum width that means how we can write the query means if it is less than 500 pixels we are going to decrease the size 
or else we are going to keep it normal then we have to use the max queries so this is min so if you scroll down advanced configuration you will be having the max width breakpoints you just need to click on this max width breakpoints yeah here you can see so here it is having sm max 639 so if you write any query using sm it will work only in the mobile devices that means even if you write normal query in the tailwind class or if you write sm the sm will overwrite the normal query because we are writing the breakpoint here so just copy this screens object i'm going to explain further in the example copy this screen object so if you are aware of the CSS normal media queries, it will be very easy for you to write the breakpoints in the tailwind. So you have copied right now, just paste it in the theme. Yeah. So now we have pasted. So just remove all these comments. We have to make sure everything should be clean. Yeah. So we can consider now as up to 7, 6, uh, 639 pixels, we can call it as SM or else we can also provide uh, provide the uh, our uh, own name also. We can call it as mobile, we can call it as smaller devices, anything. So I don't want to rename this, SM is looking good. And this is MD. So MD is almost nothing but tab views. So from 767 to 1023, it will be tab views. Then after we are having LG, then after we are having Excel, then after we are having 2xl so we need not to bother about these uh, three things because by default whatever the code we are writing that will work for these three devices so we have to write media queries only for these two sm and md that means in the uh, mobile devices or small tablets so now let's go to the temp.js so by default we have written text 8xl that means it will apply for all the breakpoints so here you can see it will apply for all so if you want to override for any certain breakpoint, you just have to write that. So I want to override this for the mobile. So that means I am going to write SM colon. So in SM, I want text 3XL. I don't want text 8XL in the mobile. I want only text 3XL. So if I hover on this max width 639. So up to 639, we are having font size is equal to just 30 pixels. Now let's go and check. Where is the output? Yeah, here you can see the font size got decreased. So if I open the same screen in the web view, automatically it will be increased. Where is the console? Yeah. Here you can see the size got increased. In mobile view, it is decreased. In, in, uh, in normal web view, it is increased. So like this way, you have to write. So not only 639, you can keep your own value and you can keep your own breakpoints. So we mostly using this SM in the mobile devices. Now let's see what else we can do with the media queries. Not that means breakpoints. So not only adjusting the size, we can also uh, write display hidden properties in the mobile view. That means I don't want this text in the mobile view. I want only this text in the web view. So I can simply write SM none. Oh, I think we should be having none no it is not having there should be a property called as display none let me check what is the display none property in the tailwind display basic usage mm, somewhere we should be having display none let me search directly display none tailwind css hidden so we are having the uh, class called as the hidden so in mobile i am going to write hidden if you observe in the desktop view we can able to see the hello text now if i open this in the mobile view we do we should not see that here you can see it got hidden that means we are hiding intentionally hello in the mobile view by writing the css or tailwind css breakpoints so this scenario will be useful whenever we have complex navbar like our uh, bottom navbar so our bottom navbar will look very good in the web view but coming to the mobile view we have to customize things because we have written like a crone like structure for the active element like that so in that cases we have to write some display hidden 
so this is about the tailwind breakpoints now let's see some other properties so in the mobile view i want to add some color for the text so text red 500 so in the normal view that means in the web view i don't want any background i don't want any text color i want the default black so in the mobile view i want the text color should be red and also sm i want the color should be uh, i want the font weight should be bold font semi bold in sm refresh i think uh, we have to remove this hidden property yeah we have removed it why it is not working text excel sm text 3 excel let me close this okay some other page got open yeah now i'm going to open it in the mobile view here you can see it got changed and the font size became bold so like this way we have to implement the css media queries in the tailwind so from the next lecture onwards we are going to uh, we are going to see one by one page and we are going to fix everything so at the last we are going to work on the bottom navbar because it is little, little complicated so i don't want to confuse you at the beginning only so first we will complete the responsiveness of the four pages at the last we are going to discuss about the responsiveness of the bottom navbar thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the responsiveness for the home page so i am going to clean up everything and i'll delete these temporary files as well as the route because we don't want any junk in the official application delete so in the app.js we'll get an error because we have deleted the file which we have used here also i'll remove that's all now let's go to the home page yeah so now let's try to see this in the mobile view i think it looks very odd but no worries we are going to fix it everything yeah so it is not even looking like a beginner website so we have to make it professional now the first thing is we have to decrease i want i will open this complete in the mobile view so yeah so it got opened in the mobile so i'll keep this in the uh, as it is so we will write the code and we'll see the changes live so first of all we have to remove this px32 in the mobile view so if i open home we will be having i think px32 in the normal so in the sm i want px2 that's it superb looking good now if i go to the intro so we have this h1 text right we have text 7 excel now i am going to make it sm text let me write 4 excel first 4 excel is also going out let me write 3 excel mm, 3 excel ok you should write hyphen here let me write 5 previously we don't have the hyphen mm, yeah and one more thing is why the best is coming down the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing oh so the first thing we have to do is here we are having grid calls to right so in the sm it should be grid calls one we should show only one part first text then after animation yeah now it's much cleaner and now i am going to write some margin in the sm md 20 cool so the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing and let me increase this to the 6xl 6xl and here i am going to make it 4xl yeah the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing so animation is looking good so want to boost your business growth here also i am going to decrease the font size so what we are having here marketing strategies Mm, 
I want to boost your business growth. Let me write just three Excel. Yeah, want to boost your business growth, and also I'm going to write some margin. SM MT ten. Yeah, looking clean. Now the solution is here. Uh, we are going to change the font size. SM text five Excel. yeah we got it now the paragraph i don't want to change the size it will be both same in mobile and web view now we have to change a uh, grid so here uh, in the desktop view we are displaying uh, one side by side so we are going to make it only one in the mob view uh, mobile view sm grid calls one that's it superb here you can see looking very good yeah and one more thing is here you can, if you see a uh, search engine optimization came out so now what i will do so for this h1 text uh, we are having mx20 right sm i am going to make it mx just 5 now it's look cool you don't have any issues yeah now we are having this y marketing text come down y marketing marketing is for growth <laughs> sm same text 5 xl yeah cool and here we are having the text as well as some paragraph yeah that's all we made the home page responsive now let's see it in the web view we should not see any effect on the web view here you can see everything is looking good there is no effect after writing the mobile view code yeah that's all so even if you open this in any device it will work fine here you can see in all the devices so even if you want to write any separate code for the tab view also you can write so right now we are focusing only on the mobile view as well as the desktop view so this is about the responsiveness of the home page in the next lecture we'll be working on the responsiveness of the about page thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the responsiveness of the home page so now in this lecture we are going to work on the responsiveness of the about page so in the about page the bottom sections are very simple the only complicated thing is this uh, uh rotated uh, uh what it is background so we are not going to make this rotate in the web view uh, not web view in the mobile view so we are going to keep as like the normal background so first let me open this in the responsive i think it will look very ugly yeah so it's looking like this now let me open the code about intro this is about intro.js so i am going to write sm rotate 0 rotate 0 looking clean and now mm or else why can't we do this so here i am going to write sm hidden and for this text i am going to write sm bg primary oh not primary secondary that's all now so first we are having the image second we are having the text so in that case you just need to write grid calls 1 not directly it should be inside sm that's it now so grid grid calls one so let me write some padding in the sm sm p10 okay we got this secondary yeah now uh, i want to uh, decrease this agency size so 
text oh it should be in the sm sm text file excel wait okay not here it should be for the text cool so i don't want this space so what i can do means um mm, z10 from where we are getting that space mm okay hmm i think the image is having some lot of uh, empty space so in that case what we can do here i'll just write sm minus mt 20 yeah now this is looking clean so anyhow the navbar will come down so we need not to worry so i think this is looking much better so i think this is the empty space of the image if i inspect this here you can see the image is having lot of empty space that's the reason it is uh, coming like that so we can apply the m minus negative margin oh it got broken here somewhere we might have missed the sm tag let me check sm hidden sm bg sm p10 where we have okay min h screen here yeah now it's perfect now let's open the mobile view yeah so here after these uh, orange background we are going to have some padding in the mobile view for what we do so what we do z10 sm mt 10 and also for this i'm going to write sm text file excel yeah what we do i know so now we are going to write media queries for this so here we are having grid grid call force write so simple in sm we should write grid calls one that's all yeah and one more thing is width so the width is getting decreased so let me write space flex uh, flex y h over scale duration where the width is getting decreased mm. h96 w full okay i will write the full width in both sm full or oh, w full sm w full and here also i am going to write w full for sm yeah so w full is okay but it is going this side somewhere it is having margin or kind of z10 mt h96 okay p5 M okay mx32 yeah this is the issue so now i am going to write um, sm mx2 or 3 max 3 cool or else uh, 2 or 3 is also not looking good let me remove mx0 let me have mx0 and uh, here i am going to write sm px5 i want px superb now looking clean there you can see what we do so web development mobile development digital marketing graphic design yeah this looks cool now we are left with i think uh, we are not even able to see this so why choose us so this is why choose us let's go there so mx32 here i'm going to make it sm mx5 or 3 cool not even 5 or 3 mx0 i want okay 
yeah mx3 is good i i'll tell you why so now uh, we have to adjust these y chooser text so it's simple uh, flex h full flex items entity yeah we just need to adjust the text sm text uh, 4xl y chooses now i am going to have sm grid calls one that's all we need yeah cool clear everything so that's it guys this is about the about page in the responsive view so in the next lecture we'll be working on the contact page not contact clients page thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the clients page responsive views so if i open clients here you can see it is also looking very odd so let's close everything here first close all clients intro so h screen grid so don't use h screen in the mobile view it should be min h screen because sometimes we may miss it yeah so now grid grid calls 2 let me make it sm grid calls 1 yeah so this is showing fine now for this text i am going to have some font size in the mobile view so here i'll just write sm text 4xl yeah we work with our clients okay let it work <laughs> so here we can have some padding p10 cool so we work together with our clients okay work now let me go to the clients list yeah <laughs> this is the complex part i think so i think we have to get rid of this uh, arrow icon in the mobile view we have to click on these things only so first of all uh, let's make the uh, list responsive so clients list somewhere we should have a uh, grid okay flex space x to right so i am going to make it sm flex call what happened flex call what the hell is this man we have to get one by one oh sorry we have to write this above not here yeah okay here we are having grid only not flex so grid calls three right so i want to write mm, grid sm grid uh, calls 1 yeah this looks clean hmm now what i will do so we have to adjust the height and width now this is the complicated thing so first of all uh, here gap 10 let's make it gap decreased in the mobile view sm gap 2 gap 2 and we have to decrease this space from the white uh, left side somewhere we should be having that space extend minus mt this is okay space extend this is also okay yeah so it is having w uh, 400 and uh, h 350 in the mobile uh, web view so now i am going to write sm w auto 
yeah this looks clean and now one more thing i will change is so here we are having some border radius right in the intro so i want to decrease that border radius where we are having mini screen bg primary grid grid goals where is the index somewhere we should have that border bottom radius clients list yeah here bg uh, rounded b full so i don't want rounded b full in the mobile view sm rounded mm to excel that's it rounded b to excel yeah so this looks clean now and uh, we have to make one more change so this is the map function right here we are having flex so in this i am going to make it sm flex call so logo and text should be one by one flex call yeah now logo and text should be one by one and i will remove this uh, space x zero in the mobile view sm space x zero that means space x 10 in the mobile view i have removed it this looks clean and i will also remove the font size not font size image size so sm w10 and uh, sm h10 cool looking very good so i will decrease increase the height now or uh, not height width so this is okay flex call okay space x10 won't work so mm almost looking good grid calls 3 gap 10 so here also i am going to remove the gap oh already we have removed it then what is this space i don't want this space mm height also should be auto it should not be limited so in the mobile view this div height should be also auto sm w auto sm h also auto only in the normal view we are having the fixed height and width yeah now this is looking clean and now i will remove this uh, hamburgers in the mobile view so this is the first hamburger i am going to write sm hidden and here also i am going to write sm hidden not hamburger there is arrow icons where it is yeah so this looks clean now here we can navigate through the uh, dots so if you observe we are having some space issue here margin or padding let me fix it mm, this is the flex space x10 we don't want this space x10 in the mobile view sm space x0 superb and we just want some padding sm p 2 or 3 let me write 3 cool yeah so this looks very fine or else we can apply 5 for the better looking hmm cool so these are our clients so here you can navigate to different clients yeah now we are having the last thing that is numbers numbers.js so here i think we are we just need to adjust the Now what it is uh, flex first so here it is having the flex right bg secondary flex i am going to make it flex call in the mobile view sm flex call let's see the output and also px52 in the normal view and uh, in sm i want px5 cool 
so 152 clients 485 projects and 24 locations and it should be aligned only at the left or else center so here we are having space extend if it is flex call we should be having a sem item center that's it and also i am going to have sm space y phi and here i am going to r uh, space y2 is there yeah this is looking clean almost until today we have provided our services or else why can't we make it items start instead of center this is okay but why is this is not working <coughs> okay it is having space extend so in the sm i am going to remove it sm space x 10 still it is pointing so it is having p5 scroll items mm. why this space i am not understanding flex call ok space y ok i will remove this p5 once or else i am going to make it sm p0 no this is not the issue somewhere we are having the item start this is also ok space wifi ok flex call ok rounded justify between so justify between should be only work in mobile view not mobile view in only desktop view so let me inspect and check what is the issue so this is flex first div ok S for second div somewhere it is having margin or something second and third div you see margin left i think no mm. this is okay Why in the mobile view let me open once again what is this i want these 485 projects to be started the center not center start flex space y2 9 xl text y 2 xl almost having the same properties as like the first one okay okay sm space x0 not 10 yeah now it is perfect so 152 clients 485 projects and 24 locations so this looks clean and i'll also write space y 10 yeah this looks clean so client page is also fully responsive so in the next lecture we'll be working on the responsiveness for the last page that is contact thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the responsiveness for the contact page so first let me open the contact <laughs> looking too odd no issue so let's open contact index so first i am going to make it sm grid calls oh not two one that's it half of the issues got fixed <laughs> now sm p5 oh not 0 0.5 it's p5 that's all the issue got fixed here you can see looking clean and i want some margin also 
not merged in if it is address we should have the p5 why it is taking the complete width go to the address mm flex call this is okay p10 mm i want the background here i want some white colors i should able to see the corner radius clearly mm how we can do that sm m5 I use M5 also no change. Thing here it should work P5, but I here SM M5 MX is not working. Only MT is working. That means from left and right it is not applying any space. Space Y P10 okay. Text white this is all okay. Okay, here we are having the BG white. Mm, let me apply here M5 in the SM. Still, it is not working. I think the this is the issue with width. The width is not uh, enough if we apply the padding. Mm, okay, let's leave like that. So first, let's go to the form. So form, I don't want this first name last name side by side. I want everything should be one by one. so contact form <coughs> so mm, this is flex right in sm i'll make it flex call so and we have to change some more things sm space y 10 and sm space x0 space x0 now perfect same classes we need to apply for the above first name and last name also copy this and paste it here that's all this is the contact page so only thing is we are lifting some padding here let me check whether we, if we can do or not that pb okay for this div i am going to apply padding 10 px yeah overflow x what is oh not here actually this is the layout div padding yeah this is actually the normal one for here uh, to this we have to apply the padding padding 10 px mm. think it is having some width issue width uh, 300 px okay no not working what classes we are having for this in desktop it is okay in mobile yeah it's almost okay in normal iphone we are uh, missing the padding due to the width issues so no no problem so here it is for perfect so that's all guys this is about the responsive view for contact page so in the next lecture the difficult thing in the responsive view that is uh, nav bar so we are going to work on the nav bar thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the responsiveness for the footer nav bar so this is somewhat difficult compared to the previous pages like home about clients and contact because in these pages we are having the sample content but uh, nav bar is as i said somewhat difficult to place in the mobile view so we are going to hide and we are going to show some pieces of the elements so first and foremost we have to remove this bottom space in the mobile view we don't want this bottom space 
so now for that what i am going to do means so first let me open this in the mobile view yeah so now it is in the mobile view i don't want this space in the mobile so simple let me open the layout mm there is layout yeah it should be in the components so here bottom 10 right i am going to write sm bottom 0 yeah now we got at the bottom so we don't have anything now if you observe whatever the mobile it may be we cannot shows all the items because we are having the text as well as the icon so we have to hide any one so i am what i am thinking is i want to show the text only if the element is active that means if the item is active so what i will do so where we are showing the text so this is the text right so here i am going to write if it is sm first let me hide it now we are having only icons even for the icons also flex so will come from the top so this is the actual uh, footer that means nav bar then we are having flex w full then we are going to loop through the menu items so the menu items will be having flex call because this uh, area is for the active element and remaining is for the normal text and uh, what it is uh, uh, icons so here it's uh, let me think through uh, this i want the complete items to be uh, items to be shown so here we are having the px20 so let me make it sm is equal to px3 okay so if you apply px3 we are having this space here so let me apply px5 or else mm, px10 yeah px10 is looking good and one more thing is we have this uh, active how to uh, how to highlight the active icon so here i don't want that uh, crown like uh, look in the uh, mobile view so i want this to be hidden in the mobile sm hidden yeah so the only thing is uh, we we require the icon here so how we can do before that first we have to get one thing so here if the uh, route is active we are going to show the text here so actually we are writing sm hidden directly so i am going to write it in the condition where yeah here so it's getting little complicated so here i am going to write sm hidden only if item dot path equal to equal to location dot path name not equal to actually not equal to if it is equal to we are going to show not equal to i am going to write sm hidden why it is not working okay this should be here copy this it should be inside the curly braces yeah it should work now yeah here you can see so now the home is highlighted so actually we are performing the click for the only icons now we are going to have click for all the icons as well as the name 
even for the name also we are going to have that so right now whenever the link is active we are clicking on that that means we are clicking the route navigation only for the link so now i am going to have it for the icon also so this is the icon right so for this icon also i am going to write on click on click history dot push Oh, not history dot push. It is uh, navigate. Navigate. Not this. First, we have to write the const navigate is equal to use navigate. Navigate is equal to use navigate. So here I am going to write navigate item dot path. Now let's see. I am clicking on the about. Now I am in the about page. Clients. I am in the client page, and this is contact. So almost looking good. We don't have any issues now. Yeah. So now I am going to decrease some border radius. for the crown so we need not to do anything here for the crown so only thing is um, rounded t full we are having h w 10 right um, so in that case i am going to write sm w just y here also sm w8 mm h also we are going to decrease i think or else we can do one thing we can completely get rid of the above one in the mobile view so we don't want these in the mobile view h sm hidden so it is getting too complicated it is completely rendered through the logics itself conditional rendering all those things so hmm like this way it's coming hmm no not looking good uh, i need to make some more changes let's make the control z actually this is looking good but the only issue is the icons are getting uh, overlapped hmm okay i think we just need to adjust some margin that's it remaining everything is looking good here we are having px10 so instead let me add px8 yeah this is better let me open in the mobile iphone sc this is okay cool yeah much better let me open in the phone sc yeah this is also okay and success cool hmm that's it guys so by this we have uh, done the nav bar also in the mobile view so let me see all these in the remaining screens yeah cool so that's all N uh, now we are done with the responsiveness also so in the next lecture we are going to have one one more missed component in the contact us page so that i am going to develop thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to have the designed and developed by tag in the footer or contact page so usually we will keep that in the footer so but uh, now we don't want to disturb the nav bar because it is having the complete good position at the footer so i am going to keep the uh, nav bar in the not nav bar uh, designed and developed by tag in the contact page so here at the bottom we are going to write 
let me go to the contact page so definitely we have to write our name after developing after this i am going to write h1 or else i'll create a div flex <coughs> one more div h1 design and uh, developed by so i'll write my name uh, ready that's it so i'm going to make this justify center yeah we got this text now we are going to style this because we have styled lot many things we have to style our own name now so let me apply mt32 mt32 now i am going to have text center and here for this h1 i am going to have class name text gray uh 700 text gray 700 font semi bold text for excel designed and developed by so now for the name we are going to have class name text primary font semi bold text to excel text to excel no not looking good let's use text gray only text gray 700 and here also i am going to make it to excel and here i am going to write one hr hr for i'll remove the font semi bold also it's not looking good cool so now uh, let me apply some backgrounds of colors for this mm. class name is equal to bg mm. primary not bg primary uh, bg secondary if we apply bg secondary it is overlapping with the other colors so let's remove the background color let's keep it as simple as possible mm we can apply just a shadow for this div class name is equal to let's remove this hr shadow border that's all and some p5 uh let's make it text excel itself not to excel yeah so here if you want to add any details also you can add it so this is very simple design and developed by tag so if you want to style this more you can style it so here i want to do few experiments with the border so we have written border right i'll just write border b 0 i don't want border bottom i want border bottom 0 why it is not showing we should not have any border here let's remove shadow yeah now we don't have border bottom and we can keep border 2 yeah border 2 and for this div i am going to write border b 2 cool and here i am going to write px or mx5 or mx10 i am going to write 
एम एक्स टेन या सो डिजाइन एंड डेवलप बाई टैग लुकिंग क्लीन हियर वी कैन एड सम स्टाइल्स लाइक दैट बट आई एम फीलिंग गुड सो दिस इज मच बेटर देन प्रीवियस डिजाइन सो दैट्स इट गाइज दिस इज अबाउट दी शे एजेंसी सो इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू वॉक ऑन द डिप्लॉयमेंट टू दे नेटलीफाई थैंक यू हेलो गाइज इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ नेक्स्ट जे एस वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द टॉपिक्स लाइक वॉट इज नेक्स्ट जे एस वॉट आर द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ नेक्स्ट जे एस ओवर रिएक्ट एंड वॉट आर द डिफरेंसेज बिटवीन नेक्स्ट जे एस एज वेल एज द रिएक्ट जे एस लेट स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन ऑफ नेक्स्ट जे एस वॉट इज नेक्स्ट जे एस नेक्स्ट जे एस इज एन ओपन सोर्स डेवलपमेंट फ्रेमवर्क बिल्ट ऑन टॉप ऑफ नोट जे एस एनेबलिंग रिएक्ट बेस्ड वेब एप्लीकेशन फंक्शनलिटीज सच एज सर्वर साइड रेंडरिंग एंड जनरेटिंग दी स्टैटिक वेबसाइट्स If you are watching this video I assume definitely you would be having some basic knowledge of the react js and what are the functionalities of react js because without the proper knowledge of react js it is very difficult to understand the next js concepts that's the reason in the prerequisites only I have mentioned react js basics are mandatory for this course and coming to the next js definition in the first line only we can able to see it is an open source development framework that means it is entirely free If you want to use Next.js in your web applications, you need not to put any money. You can use it freely, and it is built on top of Node.js. The meaning of this line is: if you want to run Next.js in your system, definitely you must install the Node.js. Without Node.js, you cannot run the Next.js. It is built on top of Node.js. That means if you have Node.js, you can run the Next.js. Else, you cannot run the Next.js. So these. property applies in the react js also react js is also built on the node js only without node js you cannot run the react js in your system and it is a web application framework that means used to develop the web applications so everyone knows this react is the single page application framework that means it is a front end framework used to build single page applications coming to the next js it is the full stack web application framework it is not permitted only up to front end if you know next js you can build full stack web applications without the knowledge of node js and express js here you can see the functionality such as server side rendering and generating static websites server side rendering is a new feature which is implemented only in the next js we don't have any concept like server side rendering in the react js so we will be having a separate lecture about this server side rendering so don't confuse about the server side rendering and static rendering in simple words we can say that next js is a full stack web application framework and it is the extension of react js framework now let's see the features of next js let's see one by one the first one is server side rendering as we discussed in the previous slide server side rendering is the only concept which doesn't have in the react js and it is available only in the next js we can't see server side rendering in any other framework it is only implemented in the next js concepts file based routing so this is also one of the best future in the uh, next js in react we will use the react router dom npm package for the routing purpose but when it comes to the next js we don't require any external package we will use the file based routing as like normal html files naming conventions in react we have some naming conventions but in next js we don't have any naming conventions you can give any component name and you can give any page name as like you want you don't have any rules like you should give only uh, small letters you should give only capital letters like that the naming conventions are very good in the next js next apis so this is nothing but react is permitted up to only front end but in next js we have the concept called as the apis that means we don't require any node js as the or express js for running the back end applications we can run the full stack applications using the only next js and for that we need to learn the concept called as the next js apis CSS modules in React JS you will be having the global style sheet called as the app dot CSS as well as the index dot CSS. But when it comes to the Next JS, it is also supports the CSS modules. We can use separate style sheet for every page. Easy deployment. 
सो दिस इज आलसो वन ऑफ द बेस्ट फ्यूचर नेक्स्ट जे एस इज डेवलप्ड बाई दि वर्सल वर्सल इज आलो ए होस्टिंग कंपनी सो यू कैन ईजीली डिप्लो युवर नेक्स्ट जे एस एप्लीकेशन टू वर्सल इन लेस दैन टू मिनट्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डिप्लॉय एनी नेक्स्ट जे एस और दि नेक्स्ट जे एस बैक एंड एप्लीकेशन आलसो द वर्सल सपोर्ट्स इट इट सपोर्ट्स बोथ फ्रंट एंड एंड दि बैक एंड बट वेन इट कम्स टू द रिया जे एस यू नीड टू अप्लाई सम कॉन्फिग्रेशन इन दि पैकेज डॉट जे एस एन एंड इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट प्रोसेस टू पुट अवर रियाक्ट एप्लीकेशन इन दि लाइव सर्वर्स कस्टम बैक एंड सर्वर्स सपोज यू वॉन्ट टू एड एन एक्सटर्नल बैक एंड सर्वर लाइक एक्सप्रेस जे एस नोट जे एस और डी जांगो दट इज आलसो सपोर्टेड इन दि नेक्स्ट जे एस सो यू कैन यूज युअर नेक्स्ट जे एस एपीआई और इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज एनी अनदर बैक एंड यू कैन आलसो यूज दट सो दट इज अप टू यू ऑथेंटिकेशन नेक्स्ट जे एस सपोर्ट्स बै डीफाट अथेंटिकेशन प्रोसेस and the last one is layouts you can use the layout like header footer and the body in the next js uh, pages so this is the just basic and theoretical lecture about the next js introduction and the next js futures in the next lecture we are going to see all these futures and the concepts of the next js practically and we are going to put one react application and one next application side by side in the google chrome and we are going to see all these differences Thank you. Welcome back, guys. In the previous lecture, we have seen the introduction and the futures of Next.js theoretically. Now, in this lecture, we are going to see all the things practically. First, let's see the differences of Next.js and the React.js, and we are going to see all these differences in the live applications. Let's start with the differences. The first one is. when you want to create a new react application we will use the command create react app when it comes to the next js we have to use the command create next app so both we have to run in the node js only that means node js uh, environment only then coming to the routing part in react we will use an external npm package called as the react router dom for the routing purpose when it comes to the next js we don't require any external package for the routing purpose it will support file based routing called as the next routing it will be available in only next js concepts coming to the data fetching in react we will use the static rendering that means first we will get the data json data from the back end then we will convert that json data into the html structure this is called as the static rendering coming to the next js it will support server side rendering that means from the server side only we will get the html pages separate back end if you want to build a full stack application using the react js you should have node as the back end and express js as our back end framework when it comes to the react uh, next js we don't require all that things next js supports default apis in that apis you can write the back end routes single app dot css that means global styling in the react we will have the global styling but in the next js we will have global styling as well as the css modules which can be applied for the specific pages components in react everything is component based but when it comes to the next js we will have the pages of course we can create the components but react mainly depends on the components and next js mainly depends on the pages and one more thing is in react we have one index.html file and it is the entry point for our application in index.html file we will define the app.js component and the compiler will go and check in the app.js component for the child component this is the execution process in the react js coming to the next js we don't have any html files as i said in next js everything is related to the pages we have one index.js file and that will be the entry point for our application we don't have any html files and the last one is deployment configuration to deploy any react application to the live server you have to make some changes in the package.json scripts that means you have to put some effort for the configuration when it comes to the next js we don't require all those stuff the deployment is very easy one click deployment because it is developed by the versal that means you can easily deploy our application to the versal in less time so these are the differences 
now let's see the differences in the practical part uh, create react app so this is normal thing you can use it in the terminals the second one is react router dom that means routing i will open the uh, two different web applications in the chrome the first one is developed using the next js and the second one is developed using the react js so first i will keep the react js application then i will keep the next js application you can see this application name is shapeiza this is the react based application framework and this is the next js application framework if you observe the url you can able to see versal this is the project name and this is the hosting versal.app that means it is next js application first i will open the react application so if you want to go to any root suppose i will click on the login here you can see the root is changed then bottom the component is also changed so we, the when the root is changing component is changing in the react application this is happening due to the react router dom so if you want to apply these kind of processes you should use react router dom now uh, here you can see this is the default root when i click on the add post it will go to the add post root so it is also the same process both are same routing only but to implement routing in the react js we will use some external package called as the react router dom but in the next js we don't require any external packages so by default you can implement the next js routing we just need to create a page like add post that's it so it will render i will click on this add post you can see the url is changed the page is changed so react js routing based on the components next js routing based on the pages now let's see the third difference the third difference is static rendering and this is the most important difference between the react js as well as the next js so, so if you ask someone what is next js they will easily tell uh, next js is a server side rendering application framework but no one tell the definition what is server side rendering now i am going to show you clearly what is static rendering and what is server side rendering so first of all you have to understand the structure so this is the home page home page of the uh, uh, next js application in the home page of the next js application we are having some post data this is the first post this is the second post and this is the third post coming to the react we are having some uh, pizzas data in the home page so in the react we are having the pizzas in the next we are having the post that is not a difference both are uh, like components only now if i open network for the react js application I will perform the uh, API request that means when the page is uh, loaded the API request will be sent to the database to get all pizzas data I will refresh the page here you can see this is the API request get all pizzas this is the API route which is going to the backend and the backend is sending these data JSON data to the front end and the react is converting these JSON data to the HTML structure if you observe these we got the seven pizzas data right not seven eight the index start with zero zero one two three four five six seven now let's count the pizzas first one second one third one fourth one fifth one sixth one seventh one eighth one so here you can see we have eight pizzas and we have eight objects so the react is converting these eight json data to the html content that means first we are getting the data static data then it is converting to the html structure uh, one more time i will tell so we will get only data like normal text data json data from the server we are getting these data from the server and we are converting these data into the html part using the react js so this is the first pizza right here you can see category is equal to wedge description uh, if you click on this pizza you will get the description and the name of the pizza new margarita pizza here you can see we are getting these in the json data and we are converting it to the html content using the react js in simple words in name we are having the new margarita it is normal text but here it is in the h1 text it is normal url in the json here it is representing as the image that means we are getting the static data we are converting it to the html content this is called as the static rendering that's it this is about the react js rendering process or the data fetching process now let's go to the next js website here i will open the network tab 
now i will refresh the page yeah where is the api request i couldn't find the api request i will go to the post route i think in this route we are having the api request yeah here you can see this is the api request here you can see in the preview we are directly getting the html content if you observe here next crud add post battleground so we are getting directly server side data in the html format not just like the json data we are getting html so in the react here you can see we are getting json data but in the next js we are getting the html data that means it is getting rendering in the server side and the server is sending the html content leave about the css so we are adding the css in the front end but whatever the html content we have written in this page that is getting rendered in the server side and the server is sending us this data not json data the complete html data this is called as the server side rendering in react we will render the html in the static purpose that means static type first we will get the json data from the server then we will convert that json data to the html content but when it comes to the next js we will get the direct html content from the server side we don't have any conversion process of json data to the html in simple words we don't use json data in the next js we will use directly html content only so the advantages of this server side rendering on this static rendering is server side rendering increases the page speed and automatically it will also increase the seo that means uh, if these two websites are deployed to the google uh, search engine these websites will find first if you want to search this uh, next js crud you can get this website at the top but if you deploy this shape is application to the google you cannot find this uh, application easily so next js supports good seo and also faster seo because of this server side rendering so this is the basic concept of the server side rendering and the static rendering so we will be having a separate section not lecture i am having separate section about this data fetching process only so if you can't understand anything here don't worry you will be having a separate lecture and it will be more than 3 4 lectures so in that section we are going to discuss only about this data fetching process only so if you are not understanding anything here you can understand there i will close this so i hope you understand the differences between react rendering as well as the next js rendering react supports static rendering and next js supports server side rendering now let's see the another difference separate backend so it is also simple here uh, to get this data from the backend we will use the node js or the express js node js is the runtime environment and express js is our backend framework but in the next js we don't require that so we will write all the backend concepts in the next js application only you will be having a separate folder called as api and in that api folder you have to write the backend scripts we don't require any backend servers or backend folders single app dot css i will explain that now so here you can see this is the home page of the uh, shape is application that means react application if i go to the login this is the login page in react we have to write all the css code in the same page app.css of course you can make the separate files but at the end of the day you will get all the css in a single file but the react compiler so you can write another uh, multiple files also but uh, while compiling time it will make a single file called as the app.css but in the next js we have the facility called as the uh, modules so this is the post write post root so you can make a separate module called as the post.module.css in that file you can write only styling which are related to the post not like the react js in react js we have the global style sheet called as the app.css and the index.css and in next js it supports the direct modules we need not to install any external packages for that modules also it will support by default and uh, coming to the fifth difference not fifth it is sixth components uh, 
uh, it is a simple difference uh, react js is based on the components and everyone knows that it is completely component based and next js is based on the if framework so in react we will create multiple components but in next js we will create multiple pages index.html so for this also we don't require that live servers so in index.html we will write the entry point or the default component for our react application but in the next js we don't have any html files so you will have one default page like index.js and automatically the next compiler will go and fetch the data which is present in the index.js by default and the last one is deployment configuration now i will show that here you can see the shape is the application that means react application is deployed in the Heroku server. So Heroku is also one of the famous server which supports both react as well as the Marn stack application. But somewhat difficult process coming to the next JS it is very simple process because it is developed by Vercel. So uh, trust me you can deploy your Vercel application that means next JS application into the Vercel in less than two minutes. You just need to create one Vercel account and then you need to connect your application to the github and you need to connect our github application link to the Vercel. Then that application will be automatically deployed to the Vercel. This is the deploying process. So it is one of the very useful if you are a beginner. So if you are a beginner, it is very difficult to, to change the make changes in the package.json file because if you touch any another line which is not uh, related to the hosting, so it will damage whole application. But in the next JS, we, we do not touch that package.json file. So everything will be take care by the Vercel only. So these are the basic differences between the React JS and uh, Next JS. I hope you understand the differences. So if you are having any doubts, please ask in the Q and A section. And you, we will be having a separate section about the uh, routing part, data fetching part. That means static rendering and server side rendering, and these API parts, CSS part, everything. So here you can see we are having the uh, eight uh, differences right for eight differences we will be having the eight section and every section will be having more than three four videos thank you welcome back guys in the previous section we have seen the introduction of next.js and the advantages and disadvantages of next.js over react so in this section we are going to start the creation of our next.js application so to create a new react application first make sure you have installed node in your system to check whether you have installed node or not open cmd and type node so you can able to see 15.7.0 version of node in our system so if you haven't installed node you just need to open your favorite browser and type node.js and you can able to download the node.js.exe file and you can install it so i'm typing node.js or node open the first one here you can see you can download 14.17.4 or 16.6.0 you can download anything and after downloading you just need to click on the next next and we can install so now we are going to see how to create a new next application so first of all create a new folder for all our projects in this course i have created my project folder in the local disk f this is the projects local disk f i am opening that here you can see my folder name is next here by default we are having only hello world so this is the project that i have created long ago so now i will delete it so the folder will be empty now i'll just click on delete so it's going to delete now here you can see the folder is deleted now the next folder is empty so in this folder only we are going to create all our projects in this next js course so open your favorite code editor so my favorite code editor is vs code and after opening you just need to open your newly created folder so our newly created folder is present in the local disk f and the folder name is next file open folder and this pc projects next select folder so here you can see the folder is empty now i am going to open the terminal so by default the terminal is already open now i am going to create new next app 
so it's very simple it is similar to creating new react app only instead of react you just need to replace the word with the next just type npx create hyphen next hyphen app followed by the application name so obviously this is the first application in our course so that's the reason i'm going to give the application name as hello world hello world press enter so compared to new react app the new next app will take only almost one or two minutes of time in normal system so if your computer is high end configuration that means 16 gb or i7 configuration it is going to create the new next app within 20 to 30 seconds only that's the reason in the introduction section only i said next is lightweight than the react so here you can see my pc is just 8 gb and it is created within the 20 seconds so here you can see our newly created next app is hello world so first i will navigate into this hello world folder cd hello world now we are in the hello world folder which is present in the next now first of all i will expand this in the next lecture i will discuss about all these folder structure so now i will tell how to run the next app so to run the react application we have the command called as the npm start but when it comes to the next app we have some different command so that is npm run dev so this is the command every time you have to use to run the next application so press enter so this command also takes very less time compared to the npm start so here you can see the server has already started so both react and as well as the next application will run on the 3000 port only so by default it will take only 3000 port so if you want to run two next applications parallelly so the second next application will take the 3001 port so here you can see the application has uh, executed successfully and if you want to click on this localhost 3000 you can click or if you want to open localhost 3000 directly in the google chrome you can open it so usually i will open directly in the google chrome so in the next tab i will open localhost 3000 here you can see this is the by default new next app output if you have remember the new react app application output will be something like a new uh, react logo that uh, loading logo all those things etc so this is the default output for next app so in the react app the first thing you have to do is make change in the app.js when it comes to the next js you have to make the change in the i'll explain so this is the pages folder you just need to explain expand this pages folder here you can see we have the app.js so this is the entry point for our next js application so in the next js application we are rendering the components but the component here is index.js actually in the react we are we call it as components but it comes to the next js we have to call it as the index.js so this is the entry point for our application which you have seen now so this code is present in the index.js so don't worry about the folder structure all those things in the next lecture i am going to explain everything so in this lecture i am going to show you how to remove all this default stuff and how to print the hello world in this screen so first you just need to make the changes in the index.js so here you can see this is the parent div class name is equal to styles just container so you just need to remove all this stuff footer so head main footer so i will remove all the default stuff and i am going to write one h1 text here you can see i have selected everything backspace h1 next hello world control s that's it now let's see next app is also supports hot reloading so every time you need not to press the uh, npm run dev or npm run dev command so you just need to press the control s and the server will be restarted automatically as like react now i will open google chrome here you can see all the default stuff has gone we have only one h1 text which is called as the next hello world now i am going to change some value next hello world by shay control s so here you can see the output has changed automatically uh, with by control s so this is about the creating new react application 
and the printing hello world on the screen sorry this is not react application this is next application so once again i will recap all the things that we have discussed in this lecture so first of all make sure you have installed node or not so if you don't know how to check please open command prompt and type node so if you have installed node it will show the current version or else it will show the error so if it is showing the error you just need to open the google chrome and go to the node website and download it after downloading node you just need to create a new folder for all our projects because everything should be in one place so you can learn it better so i have created a new project folder called as the next in my local disk f and in this folder i have created my first next application called as the hello world so next application creation is similar to the react only you just need to replace the command react with the next in the react application we will type npx create react app when it comes to the next we will type npx create next app followed by the application name so here the application name is hello world that's the reason i have typed npx create next app hello world so after pressing enter of that command you will get this folder hello world so these are the default folders which you will get while creating the new next app so in the next lecture i will explain all these folder so to make first change in the application you just need to expand the pages after pages you just need to click on the index.js then you have to remove all the default stuff in the index.js and replace one h1 text in the div with your hello world value that's it so it's very simple so you just need to replace the react keyword with the next in the create next app that's it in the next lecture i am going to uh, explain about the project structure or file structure of the next app thank you welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have discussed about the project structure of the next.js application so we have seen what are the default files and folders that we get by default whenever you create a new next application in this lecture we are going to discuss about the debugging of the next.js application so already we have discussed a few key points in the previous lecture only what files and folders we need to touch and uh, what is the execution process in the next.js application that means which files execute first let's see the project structure one more time i'll close this underscore app.js next node modules pages public and styles already i have said pages is the heart of the application because 90 percent of the code we are going to write in this pages folder only expand this pages folder and uh, uh, as of now you can ignore the ignore this underscore api not underscore api api folder because it is related to the back end or api connections as of now we can ignore it we are going to have a separate section as i said and apart from that we are having two files underscore app.js index.js so underscore app.js is the custom component so as i said react deals with the components next.js deals with the pages so to implement routing in the react we need to import a separate npm module called as the react router dom but when it comes to the next.js we don't require any external modules for the routing because next.js supports file based routing so first of all if you open index.js we are having the file name starting with the small letter so if you remember the react application all the components names we will start with the uh, capital letters only and here also export default function home here the file name is difficult and here the function name is difficult but when in the react application we will get errors if you write code like this first and foremost we will create the component name with the capital letter and every time 90 percent of the scenarios we are going to use the same component name as the class name or the function name so this is the thing we will follow in the react application but in the next application we don't require all those rules so of course in the react application also we don't get any errors but we need to write some more code to uh, get the output without errors but in the next application we do not have any naming convictions so you can give the small letter uh, starting as our file name and you can give any one of the name as your component or the function name so by default we will get the uh, function name as home now i am going to change it as the index control s here you can see the server has restarted now i will refresh the page here you can see there is no change in the output now i am going to change some value 
शे अंडर स्कोर आई एम गोइंग आई हैव गिवन थ्री अंडर स्कोर लेट सी हियर यू कैन सी वी गॉट दी थ्री अंडर स्कोर सो वी डोंट हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम विद दी नेमिंग कन्वेंशन इन दी नेक्स्ट जेज सो यू कैन गिव दी कॉम्पोनेंट नेम एज लाइक यूअर विश वी डोंट हैव एनी रूल दट इट शुड बी स्टार्ट विथ कैपिटल लेटर इट शुड स्टार्ट विथ स्मॉल लेटर ऑल दोज थिंग्स बट If you change the index.js file name, it will throw the error because index.js is the default page and app.js is the default component in the Next.js. So for the index.js, we need not to write any root. So in the localhost 3000, by default, it will render the index.js component or page. So because index.js is the default, it do not have any name. Suppose here I am going to change the name of this file, rename. i am going to change home.js so it will throw the error now refresh here you can see this page could not be found so if you want to change the name you need to change the root also so as of now we haven't started routing part in the next section we are going to discuss about that so in this lecture we are going to discuss only about the configuration so if you want to change you just need to change the root also that's the reason the main page should be start with index.js only now i will keep it index.js now let's see index.js refresh here you can see we have the same output because index.js doesn't look for any root it will render automatically and now let's see in the underscore app.js so i hope you understand about the index.js it is the default page that will get by default whenever you create a new next application so if you want to create any other pages you can create in the pages folder and we have to add the routing so in the next section we are going to de discuss about the next js routing as of now just learn about the debugging underscore app.js so this is the custom component so here you can see my app is the function name if you change this my app you will get the errors let's see here i am see i am replacing my app with the your app <laughs> your app here also i am going to replace your app so now control s now let's see output refresh here you can see we are having the same output we didn't got any errors this is because we have changed the function name as well as the export default function name so here we are exporting the same component we have changed function name at the top and we have changed function name at the bottom so that's the reason we didn't get any errors suppose if you change this underscore app.js definitely you will get the errors because it is present in the configuration so the configuration will look in the underscore app.js file so here if you change your app dot js your app dot js you will definitely get the errors now let's see refresh here you can see internal server error because by default the next js server will look for the underscore app dot js file then it will look for the index dot js so this is the execution process in the next js application so in the pages folder the default two things that are mandatory are underscore app.js index.js underscore app.js is the default component and uh, underscore uh, not underscore index.js is the default page app.js now let's see control c i am going to restart the server because we we, we got the error npm run dev uh let's see yeah it is restarted refresh the page come on come on yes we got the output so i hope you understand what things you have to make changes in the app.js as well as the index.js so i will open notepad and i will write the one line so the how the execution process so first whenever you type the command npm run dev so if you type the command npm run dev first it will check for the underscore app dot js then it will look for the index dot 
js so if you are having more than one page it will look for the localhost 3000 slash root name so if you do not have any pages it will look for only index.js so this criteria is only single page if you do not have any other pages this criteria will work so if you have more than one page the criteria will be different so that criteria comes under the routing part which we are going to discuss in the next section so as of now this is our project debugging so the first file that is going to execute whenever you press npm run dev is underscore app.js so if you want to modify anything in the underscore app.js you can modify in the code but not with the file name and here you can see i have modified the component name so instead of my app i have written your app so it, it didn't throw any error because the file will the uh, next js uh, server or next js compiler will look only for the component which is present in the underscore app.js it will not look for the component name so whatever the component uh, exporting so here the component is exporting with the values which are present in the pages so here the page props are nothing but pages so it is exporting values correctly whatever it may be the component name will be your app or my app so it will not throw any error but it will look for the file name which starts with the underscore app.js so if you change underscore app.js it will definitely throw the error in the index.js you can make any changes so you can change the component name you can change the code or you can change anything so by this i hope you understand what is the difference between underscore app.js and the index.js and what what to do what not to do in the pages folder so in the next lecture we are going to start the routing in the near uh, next js thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to start the next js routing so as i said in the introduction lecture next js supports the file based routing so it will be similar to normal HTML pages. So already we have created the hello world project in our next folder. So if you want to create a new project for the only routing purpose, you can create or if you want to continue in this hello world project, you can. So the choice is up to you. I want to continue in the same project because it is not a big concept. So it's very simple. Yeah, Next.js routing is very simple. So we need not to install any external modules also. So we just need to create the pages in the pages folder and we have to set up the routing so first of all we have only one page in the pages folder that page is index.js so this is the default page which we need not to create it will get by automatically whenever we create a new next application so in the index.js i am going to replace the content with just page name So we are having the text as next hello world. Now I'm going to change it as index page. Control S. Yeah. Now let's see the output. Here you can see the content has changed successfully. Now I am going to create one more page. So usually uh, we will have the pages like users, users.js. So in this users.js, you can create any type of component that may be functional or as well as the class. So we do not have any restrictions that you should create only class or you should create only functional. So but compared to class, functional is easy. So I'm going to create the functional component RFC react functional component snippet. So here you can see we got the component name with the small letter, but you should not do like this. So make it capital h1 users page control s now we have two pages in our area uh, next js application the first one is index.js and the second one is users.js so index.js is the home page that means we do not have any specific route for the index.js so it will be rendered in the localhost 3000 but users.js is not like that it is a separate file which we have created so it will have the root so what is the root name as i said next.js is having the file based routing so here the root is nothing but the file name so we just need to type localhost 3000 slash file name 
so here the file name is users that's the reason we just need to type users now i am going to open the chrome i will refresh the page here you can see in the home index.js we are having the text index page in the localhost 3000 it got rendered now i will navigate to the users Here you can see we got the text user page. So if you observe in the index.js, we are having the text at the center of the page, but in the u sorry in the users.js, we are having the text at the top of the page because in the users.js we haven't imported any styling. So we are having the styling to keep this text at the center in global.css. I think so. Uh, global.css as well as the home module.css. So you can import both in the users.js. I am going to import this. So already we are having this import styles from. Yeah, keep it here and let's see. Again, it is at the top of the page. Now I am going to use the same text index.js. So for the div, we are having the class name as styles.container. So the module styling, I think you don't have any idea about this. We are going to discuss about this later. So first of all, I am going to uh, copy this class name. And I'm going to keep the class name for this div. Now let's see whether we got the h1 text at the center of the page or not. Yeah, here you can see. So if you apply that class, you will get the text at the center of the page. So now we are having the both uh, index.page and uh, users page. Now I'm going to create one more page. Uh, the page name is, I will write services, services.js. Same, I'm going to copy the text, copy the same, paste it here. In the, instead of h1, we just need to write services so if you do not change the uh, component name also you will not get any errors because it it is getting rendered by the file name not with the component name so in services.js you can keep the component name as like your wish so you, you can keep index you can keep home or you can keep services or if you keep the users also you will not get any errors now i will show you so first i will keep the services only then i will show the users so first I have given the component name as like a file name. Now let's see. This is users. Now I will type services. Here you can see we got servers page. It's not servers, it is services. I will change the text. Services. Yeah. So now I am going to change the component name. So instead of services, I am going to give the users only. So it will not affect our output because it is getting rendered by the file name, not with the component name. Now I will show you the output. Refresh the page. Here you can see in the services root, we are having the services text only. In the users root, here you can see we are having the users only. So if you go to the home page, that means localhost 3000, you can have the index.page or index page. So here the component name is not restricted. You can give any name. You can give index or you can give home or you can give direct file name, but it should start with the capital letter. If you give the small, uh, small letter components also, it will not raise any error, but in the react we have habituated to use the uh, capital letters for creating components so that's the reason we can continue like this only so let me show you with the small letter so here the component name start with the small letter so here actually we should not call it as the component it should be page but here we are having the syntax like the functional component that's the reason i am saying it as the component now let's see this is the users now i am going to refresh the page you can see after refreshing also we don't have any errors so now i'm going to change the uh, users or index so in the index we are having the component name as small capital letter now i'm going to change it to small now let's see 
just go to the localhost 3000 here you can see we don't have any errors that means we do not have any restrictions with the naming conventions in the uh, Next.js application but when it comes to the react.js we are having some restrictions while creating the components as well as the uh, files etc in the next lecture we are going to see how to navigate from one page to another page programmatically that means creating links thank you welcome back guys in the previous lecture we have seen how to navigate from one page to another page using the Next.js link tags in this lecture we are going to see about the router parameters in the next.js so this is one of the most important concept in the next.js routing part so how can we navigate using the routes so as i uh, in the last lecture only i have shown the demo suppose we are having the users page so in the users page we may have more than 10 users so for the first user we will be having the root as users slash one for the second user we will be having the root as users slash two so when we have the slash two you should be able to show the data of only second user so when you have slash three you should be able to show the data of the third user so this is the concept that we are going to learn in this lecture so first of all if you refresh we do not have any parameters that's the reason it is redirecting to the users page only so now i will show you how to create the parameters in the next.js routing so first of all open the uh, folder pages so this is the pages folder so whenever you want to keep the parameters for your root you have to create a new folder for that root only so in the demo i have shown the users right now i am going to keep the new folder not new file new folder for the only users users so this is the users folder now let's create the sorry let's move this users.js file to the users folder move that's it and now you have to replace this users.js with the index.js because for the index.js file we do not require any root index.js that's it now let's see refresh the page here you can see we got the error uh, styles home module so this is because uh, in the users.js we have used the styles that's the reason it is throwing the error so styles is present outside of the uh, users folder that's the reason it is throwing error so you just need to keep this double dots here because it is in other, another uh, rooted folder control s now the error should gone yeah here you can see so now we are having the same output so it will uh, uh, the index.js present in the users so the users is present in the pages so whenever you have typing localhost 3000 first it will goes to the pages index.js and if you type localhost 3000 slash users it should go and search in the users folder in the users folder we are having the index.js so we need not to type users slash index.js so automatically whenever you type localhost 3000 slash users it should go and search in the users folder and if we do not have any other files that's the reason it is having the uh, index.js that will be rendered suppose you are having the three users now let's see i'm going to create three files user1 user1.js one, user and user2.js and user3.js user3.js now in the user1.js i am going to create rfc uh, h1 user1 copy the statement and paste it in the user2 Control S, user 3, that's it. So in the index dot, uh, sorry, in the users dot JS, I am going to give the, uh, sorry, uh, this is enough. So first let's see how it's gonna work. Yeah, this is the users. So in the users dot JS page, we are having the only one H1 text and the two link tags. Now let's see 
I am going to type users slash user1. Here you can see user1. Now I am going to type, uh, type user slash user2. User2. User3. User3. So how long you will create the components like this. So it is not at all possible when you are having more number of users. So that's the reason you have to use the routing parameters. So how can you create the routing parameters in the next JS. So now I'm going to show that. So first of all, remove all these user one, user two, user three, delete. Here also you can delete. Here also you can delete. That's it. Now I am going to create one file. ID dot JS. So square bracket in that square bracket, you have to write ID dot JS. Sorry, I have given the square bracket symbol wrong. Open bracket and close bracket. Yeah. So ID dot JS. Sorry, this is not a square bracket. This is curly brace. Yeah, this is the correct one. And in this id.js file, you can create any component. So I'm going to write RFC. So instead of this, uh, I will write index control s. So the component name should not contain square brackets, all those things, etc. It should have only name. And here I'm going to write h1 user details. That's it. Now let's see. So this is the localhost 3000, right? First, I will navigate to the users page. This is the users page. Now I am going to write the slash one. So these uh, five will be our ID. So whatever the uh, name you have given for this file that will be treated as the parameter name. So in the square bracket, I have given the name as ID. So which is having the uh, after slash that will be treated as ID. So this is the way uh, you can create parameters in the Next.js routing. So here you can see if I uh, run this page, you will get the user details. Sorry, it is users, not user. Yeah, here you can see user details. So if you type six also, you will get the same output. If you type seven also, you will get the same output. So how can you receive this uh, seven value that means id value to our page so it is also very simple so you just need to type next js routing next js router so here you can see we are having the next js router if you see we are having one hook called as the use router so you just need to copy this statement and paste it here in the id.js you have to paste it so here i am going to create the object of that use router const router equal to use router so this is the hook and here i am going to write one h1 text id is or user id is user id is user id is so you just need to type object name here the user router object name is router router dot query query dot parameter name so we have given the parameter name as id so that's the reason you have to write id control s that's it now let's see refresh the page here you can see I got user ID is equal to seven. Now I will type five. Here you can see user ID equal to five. If I type four, you will get four. If you type any value or string, you can you will get that. So here I will type she. Here you can see user ID is equal to she. So if you type zero, it will write zero. 
so this is the way you have to write the parameters in the next js routing now i will apply the same concept for the services so you will understand better so first of all whenever you are having the parameters for your root you have to make a separate folder that page create folder new folder the folder name is services and in the services you have to create the home page with the help of index.js file index.js and here you can see whatever the content is there in the services copy and paste it in the services.js or index.js in the services folder so you can delete this file now because it is present in the services folder you can delete this close everything now let's see let's run services whether it is working or not services here you can see again we got this uh, css error first of all i will remove that css statements uh, services index.js remove these styles and here also you can remove this uh, services class name styles.container class name yeah refresh here you can see services page so indexed uh, index and users so we are having two roots so here if i type services phi services slash phi it will throw the error here you can see we do not have any page with the id or receiving parameter in the services folder so if you have only page like this it will not throw the error else it will throw the error now i am going to create one parameter new file open bracket i am going to write the parameter name as service id service id so for the users i have given direct id only and for the services i have given service id so it is just for the understanding purpose and here i am going to create rfc so component name should not start with these brackets let's keep home or index so better keep it index only yeah h1 here you have to import the uh, use router from the react uh, sorry next router so import use router from next link i think let me show let me see in the users file next link sorry in this file use router from next slash router next slash router so you have to keep this in the curly braces use router should be in the curly braces yeah now let's see uh, i'm going to create the object of the use router const router is equal to use router parenthesis now i'm going to write service id is service id is so you just need to type router dot query dot the file name which you have given the file name we have given service id so you just need to write service id that's it now let's see just refresh here you can see service id is five so uh, id is yeah service id is five now i will change it to 63 or 56 service id is 56 service id is 52 so like this way the parameters concept work in the next js routing so in the react we are having the react router dom we have to give the uh, we have to give the parameters in the link tag all those things but next.js doesn't support react router dom it only supports file based routing so that's the reason it is having its own router which is called as the next router so in this way you can receive the parameters from the root in the next.js so in the next lecture we are going to see how to pass multiple parameters to the same root so here we have seen how to pass only one parameter for the users we are passing only id as our parameters what if we have more than one parameter like id and username id and uh, user id all those things etc so in the next lecture we will discuss about that thank you 
welcome back guys in the previous section not previous section in the previous lecture we have seen how to pass a single parameter to any specific root so we have seen how to pass the user id to the user's root and the service id to the service root so in this lecture we are going to see how to pass multiple parameters multiple and dynamic parameters so for the user's root i am going to send two parameters uh, the first one is uh, user id 5 and the second one is user name david so here if i type the david it will show the error because we do not have any second parameter for the user's root so in this lecture i am going to show you how to send that so here you can see if i refresh it is throwing the error the page could not be found because we do not have any page like that we are having only one parameter for the users here you can see user id is 5 now i am going to show that so it is very simple already you know how to pass a single parameters to any specific page so for the users root we are passing the parameter as id so here we we have to change the file name along with id i am going to pass the user name so i am i am writing id slash so after the id you have to type slash slash one more square bracket u name i am going to type u name u name is nothing but user and i am going to keep the dot so if you press enter it will change the uh, structure of folder so i am going to press the enter here you can see the folder structure has changed so first the users is having the id then it is having the user name so the root will look like users slash id slash username so now i am going to write the one h1 text here h1 so the file uh, folder structure is little bit confusing user uh, name is same router dot query dot u name because we have given the parameter as u name control s so the root structure should be like this only localhost slash users slash id slash u name then only it you will get the correct output so here you can see we do not have any root with the localhost slash users slash user id so after user id definitely you have to mention the user name now i am going to mention the user name as david press enter here you can see now i got the output so this user details is from the this page u name dot js so we are having all these things in the u name dot js so but the folder structure will be like this users is the folder main folder in this main folder we are having the index dot js so if you want to see the output in the index dot js you have to remove the parameters if you remove the parameters you will see the output which is present in the users slash index dot js like this users page if you keep the one parameter you will get the errors because we do not have any uh, root with the only one parameter so here i am typing user slash phi or users slash phi here you can see we do not have any root we have only root with the two parameters phi slash i am going to write john john is my username here you can see user id is phi username is john so if you keep only two parameters then you will get the correct output else you will get the errors so now let's do the same thing for the services so you will understand better close these users so for the services i am going to keep the sorry we have to edit this file just type square brackets so service name s name so one more thing uh, here the important thing is you definitely you have to put slash then only you will get the correct output slash here you can see the folder structure has changed services is the main root service id is the first parameter and service name is the second parameter now i am going to put one h1 text h1 i am going to write service id is router dot query dot sorry see this is service name not service id already we have given the service id at the top router dot uh, query dot uh, what is the parameter name s name that's it yeah now let's see first i am going to navigate to the main root of the services here you can see sorry this is users 
services so this is the main root of the services now i am going to navigate with only one parameter services slash 52 it will raise the error here you can see 404 page could not be found because we do not have any root with the services which is having only one parameter we are having the services root with index or with the two parameters then only it will give the correct output service id is 52 and service name is uh, let me write hotel here you can see now we got the correct output service id is equal to 52 and service name is equal to hotel now i will change the values service id is, is equal to 26 and service name is equal to uh, computing here you can see we got the parameters service id is equal to 26 and service name is equal to computing so like this way we can pass the multiple as well as dynamic parameters to our next js routes so by this we have completed the key concepts of the next js routing so in the further sections that means in the complex topics we will go in depth of this next js routing so for as of now it is enough so in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the next js layouts concept thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to see how to navigate from one page to another page without the link tags that means uh, programmatically on clicking button or on clicking on the div etc so already we have seen how to navigate from one page to another page using the link tags but in the link tags also we have seen the navigation without the routing parameters so in this lecture we are going to complete all the navigation process in the next js router so we are going to navigate with the help of link tags and with the help of interpolation that means with parameters and with the help of buttons also so we are having three main pages right index services and uh, users so first of all i am going to navigate users so when we click on the users in the dashboard page that means home page you will navigate to the users now i am going to show you how can we navigate to this users page using the button click first of all i will create one button in the home page close all these things uh, where is home page so this is the index.js present in the pages that means root folder index.js i will click i will create one button button and here i will write navigate to users control s and i will create one more button navigate to sorry first i will write the logic for this button i am going to write on click if you want to write separate function you can write but it is a simple statement that's the reason i am going to use the arrow function arrow function yeah now i am going to create the uh, router uh, object const first we have to import that import use router use router from next slash router next slash router i am going to create the object of it const router is equal to use router yeah so now here i am going to write router dot push that's it in this push you have to write the root i am going to navigate to the users control s that's it here i will copy the statement and i will paste it instead of users you have to write services slash services and here also navigate to services services that's it now let's see refresh uh, i think it is still compiling what have sorry this is the users page so we are having the buttons in the uh, dashboard yeah so i will zoom it index users uh, this so first two are the link tags and then we are having the remaining two buttons navigate to users and navigate to services so now i will click on the first button navigate to users 
here you can see now we are in the users page go back and click on the navigate to services here you can see we are in the services page so like this way we can navigate from one page to another page programmatically now let's see how can we navigate from one page to another page if we are having the parameters so for the users page we are having the two parameters user id and user's name so you want to navigate to the uh, first user with the username john when we click on this button or I, we will create another button now i will create another button copy the statement so here i am going to write navigate to user1 or user1 and username is equal to sorry navigate to user id 1 and username equal to username john john hn yeah so here we cannot give the values directly of this one and john so of course we can give it here but when we have the function how can we give it so here i will type slash phi slash uh, username uh, username is equal to i will write same john control s so when you want to give the static values directly you can give it like this now let's see so here we are having the button navigate to user id 1 username is equal to john let's click on it here you can see sorry we have navigated to services uh, we have to change it to users users yeah now click on the navigate to user id 1 username john here you can see user details user id equal to 5 and username is equal to john so here we got the five because we have given five here if you give one it will be like one here you can see user id equal to one so now my question is what if we are having the variables of this one and john suppose uh here where is the render yeah i am going to have const user id equal to one and uh, const uh, username equal to john so i will give different names so instead of john i will give karna and user id equal to uh, 13 or 23 yeah now i want to give these values to my parameters so we cannot give directly so there's a reason we will use the interpolation that means back ticks so this back tick button is present at the left side of our one button in the keyboard when you look at our uh, left side of our one button we are having the back tick button so if you are having good knowledge about react already you, know, you might have some knowledge about these back ticks so this concept is called as the interpolation so first these are the back tick symbols then you have to write slash users slash dollar symbol then you have to write curly braces so here we have to write the parameter name the first parameter we are passing is user id user id and the second parameter i am going to pass is user name so again you have to write the dollar symbol because we got the slash here dollar symbol user name that's it control s now let's see so we have given the user id is equal to 23 and username is equal to karna now let's go to the home page now let's uh, change the button here uh, instead of uh, remove this uh, john because we are navigating to karna user id equal to 23 and username is equal to karna yeah let's see so click on the button here you can see we have navigated with the help of dynamic values not static values so we have given the values from our variables user id 23 if you change value here uh, user id equal to 26 and uh, i am going to write the username as obama control s now let's go to the home page here you can see user id equal to 26 and username is equal to obama so like this way we will navigate from one page to another page with dynamic parameters and with the programmatical part. 
so if you are want to navigate with the link tags it is very simple so here you can see we in the link tags we are having so here also if you want to keep the parameters dynamically you just need to use this interpolation as well as these dollar symbols so already i hope you are having good knowledge about these things because nextjs is the advanced concept so without uh, having knowledge about these simple concepts you cannot learn the nextjs and also this interpolation concept is very useful concept because every time we cannot give the plus symbols arrow symbols all those things etc so you just need to give the back ticks and you can use the variables directly in the strings so that's it guys this is the uh, next js routing thank you